Ayan, good afternoon. Magandang magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Teachers no, are here live in our session for today. No? Of course, I'd like to invite no, also into our stream, Sir Jake. Magandang hapon din. Ayan, baka nasa ano pa si Sir Jake, nasa background pa. Anyway, uh, there we go. Yeah. Good afternoon. Hi, Franco. Good afternoon. And to all the teachers, it's our third day. Yes, and wala nang makapagpigil sa atin no Franco oh. na maging wala wala kahit typhoon oh. sir no uh, wala oh, oh. Tayo, ano tayo pigil ng typhoon ano <laughs> na maging kaagapay yeah. para sa isa't isa no so, oh, oh, kanina yung nakikita ko yung opening video natin talagang yung hashtag na guro para sa iba yeah. guro oh. para sa guro ang lakas yeah. no Franco yung talaga oh, yung lakas, spirit sir, no? na nagdadala sa atin oh. ngayon Totoo sir, no. Actually, isa sa mga niyan, no? isa sa mga achievements siguro doon ng community yan. Yung 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 niyakap ng mga teachers na no? yung yung hashtag #guro para sa iba dati. Norm, ano lang yan. 
uh, it was just a, a common, simple hashtag. No, pero it was embraced no by by many yeah. teachers, and now it became a powerful. I don't know, um, anchor point for many teachers, yeah. no? And for the entire community, actually, no? And again, yung spirit ng guru para sa iba, hindi lang yan sa kaagapay, no? Ramdam na ramdam yun mm-hmm. definitely sa akadesya, no? Kung paano uh, tumutulong yung akadesya no? sa pag, pag, pagbibigay, no? Ng mga opportunities, learning opportunities for our teachers such as this, Sir Jake, no? Yeah. Napaka-laki um, nito. Oo, kaya nga, tayo, nagsama tayo, no, Franco? Uh, kasi yeah. nga, Uh, to to bring to life that spirit of guro para sa iba guro para sa isat isa de ba kaya tayo nagsamba this week for all these yeah. events that we're offering for free with CPD units to our teachers right? yes no at by the way no kiniklaim ko na kagad hindi lang po for this week yung uh, akadesha yeah. KTS collaboration matagal na nangyayari yan kasi matagal na rin nakapag um, ano na nakapag uh, 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 speak si Sir Jake sa ating community and of course ano pa yan? Mas lalalim, mas dadami pa. So, abangan po Marami natin pa. yung mga hinahanda namin, yung mga niluluto namin ni Sir Jake ng mga, ng mga training sessions, learning sessions for our teachers. So teachers, okay? magandang magandang hapon po and good afternoon to all of you. No? And um, we're hoping na safe po tayong lahat. Medyo makulimlim. Mukhang uulan na naman sa ating po mga teachers na pauwi pa lang po uh, sa kanilang mga ano na sa kanilang mga bahay nanonood sa kanilang mga mobile phones nanonood sa school or kaya nasa bahay na nagpapahinga habang nanonood magandang magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat no so Sir Jake siguro uh, bago tayo mag-start no is that ano nga ba tong topic natin for today and and what's up with with our our, our third session for today Right, oo. Nakikita natin sa title natin, using AR, VR. Ano ba itong mga letters na to, di ba? And uh, uh, maybe some of the teachers in the audience have uh, done some activities or have experienced some uh, learning experiences using what we call audio, uh, 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 artificial reality, virtual reality, right? Uh, pero mer- baka marami rin na uh, gusto pang matutunan uh, kung ano ba ito talaga. So, what we will be uh, learning this afternoon is one, what AR and VR tech is all about, and two, dahil mga guru tayo, paano ito magagamit uh, in our respective classrooms. And we're joined by a very good friend, a very good speaker, um, na talagang tinitingala ko rin, Franco, dati nung naghahanap ako ng animation teacher. <laughs> nagdadasal ako na sana may mag-apply no na animation kasi doon sa senior high school where I was uh, the principal of at the time we offer an animation strand in the senior high and then parang binigay ng Dios Franco <laughs> <laughs> so yung yung yes, you know? no, nag-apply and and nung kinuha ko wow nag-transform yung animation program namin sa school. Tapos mamaya malalaman niyo kung bakit ko sinasabi yes. ng lahat about him. Siguro Sir Jake no ang isa sa talagang ano natin challenge no ang challenge na siguro na binigyan kagad ng pressure ng no, ating speakers. That's why pero pagdating sa AR VR tech dalawa yung yeah. magiging ano natin diyan no, yung Uh, realities natin. Unang-una, okay, madalas at ma- mas madalas at nakikita itong mga AR, VR tech, no? Sa mga um, team parks, mga, yeah. diba, sa mga, doon natin usually nakikita, no? So, nakakulong minsan, no, yung idea yeah. ng AR and VR tech to amusement and entertainment, okay? So, ngayon ang challenge, how do we bring it into education? And how yeah. it becomes a powerful tool in education? And second, siguro, right. is that, um, yung accessibility kay alam natin na hindi ganoon kamura or hindi rin ganoon ka ano no um ka cheap no yung yung access right. dito sa AVR tech nito pero uh, uh, definitely nakita ko kanina yung mga patikim ng ating speaker no hindi tayo teachers may ma- mabibigo diyan no makikita natin kung gaano ka accessible no at hindi tayo malilimit malilimit no ng ating resources in using AR and VR tech in designing quality student experiences. Okay, so I Correct. Think hindi kailangan so, mahal, no? di ba, Franco? Hindi so, kailangan expensive or ano, mabigat yes. sa bulsa ng schools or ng teachers. Papakita yun mamaya ng guest speaker natin. Yes. At dyan tayo excited. No, actually, equally excited ako. No? Habi ko kanina, meron kasi uh, demo mamaya, no, Sir Jake. Habi ko, yeah. akin na isang slot, ha? Hindi ko na yun. That's kasi. So yung isang yeah. slot sa akin, yung slots na lang. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
Uh, so we're choosing from the audience later to participate yes. in the demo. So we'll also look yeah. forward to that, no? Para first-hand ma-experience nyo rin yung ganitong yeah. classing approach. So teachers, yung mga siguro mga teachers natin sa chat, no? Uh, mag na po kayo, mag-volunteer na kayo. Just uh, let me say, uh, just say uh, I volunteer in the chat no, for the demo later. At i-chat ko po kayo personally, no? Ayan, ganun na kalalim, uh, Sir Jake, na yung uh-huh. relationship. Kachat ko na po yan sa, <laughs> sa Facebook <laughs> ng mga teachers natin ngayon, okay? So teachers, las, lagay lang natin, I volunteer in the chat, no? Para po malaman ko if you are willing to be part of the demonstration of our speaker later. Later pa naman po yun, no? Sa dulo pa mm-hmm. ng ating session, okay? So, uh, Sir Jake, I think it's time, no? And uh, wag natin patagalin. And let's now meet, no, our speaker for today. All right. So, Akad Asia and Kaagapay Teacher Support Network are proud to uh, have with us this afternoon our guest speaker. Alam mo, Franco, he is an honors graduate from the Illinois Institute of Art at Schomburg, Chicago, USA, finishing the degree, a bachelor's degree in multimedia arts major in animation. As a 3D artist and animator, uh, he has worked for Gorgonaut Studios Philadel- in Philadelphia and Snipple Animation Studios in the Philippines. So, batak na batak na yan, both in the industry and in the classroom. Why? Because he's the former head of the animation program uh, for the Senior High School Department of I Academy and currently is now a college faculty member for the animation department in the same school. Uh, where he teaches animation and design for 2D, 3D, augmented reality, and virtual reality. So parang kakaiba talaga yung mga hinahandle niyang courses because he's only one of the very few in the country who can handle and teach these courses. But teachers and Franco, when he is not spending time with his family and working and drawing, uh, he loves reading graphic novels playing classical guitar, and long-distance running. Alam ko, magaling din to mag-badminton. And just recently, uh, you know, uh, he and uh, his wife Sarah gave birth to a very cute and beautiful daughter named Maddie. So among all the achievements, all the things that he's able to do, uh, he's also a doting daddy at this time. Kaya... Pag, pag uh, uh, kailangan mong hanapin tong taong to, no? pag hindi siya busy, nakita mo nakikipaglaro dun sa anak, no? tinuturuan uh, ng, ng, kung, ng, ng art, ng kung ano-ano. Uh, kasi nga, marunong din siya magbalanse ng oras para sa trabaho at sa pamilya. So, dear teachers, uh, let's all welcome our guest for this afternoon, Hamil Buiko. Hi, Hamil. Welcome to this collab event of Kaagapay and... Akad Asia. Oh, you're Hi, on sir. mute? Uh, microphone pa. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, sir. Sir, you know. <laughs> sir, medyo naman yun, ah. <laughs> But anyway, I'm very glad to be here. Uh, first and foremost, of course, I'd like to thank Akad Asia for inviting me. And uh, of course, Sir Jake, Sir Franco. Uh, although Sir Jake nagsasabing ganun, um, actually yung isang mentor or uh, one of the people that I consider a mentor sa educational field was uh, Sir Jake. So, ang dami kong natutunan sa kanya which was basically yung mga kulang ko when it comes to, kasi iba yung classroom setting tsaka sa professional setting for animation and visual graphics. So, there were a couple of uh, really good pointers that Sir Jake uh, shared with me which made me... Uh, more or less, uh, be passionate about the uh, craft of education. So that's why I find myself here right now. Um, although yung tiniteach ko, like you said, is um, um, kind of medyo unique siya, different siya, hindi siya na, um, traditional, hindi siya traditional. Pero the teaching methods are still grounded in pedagogical techniques. Okay. Maraming salamat, sir. Hamil. Again, welcome uh, to our community, you know. Uh, of course, sir, I mean, before siguro tayo mag-proceed with your session, okay, with this, like, uh, to ask, no, ano nga ba i-cover natin, no, and will be the expectations? Okay, sure. So, so uh, basically, we'll be covering AR and VR. So, moving forward, uh, we'll be uh, using those terms. Pero siguro, i-define siya muna natin. And then, uh, the other thing, we'll be talking more about design ng AR and VR in the classroom, especially its utility. Now, this is a very new or relatively new 
na uh, technology has actually been around for a long time pero it has experienced a very very strong resurgence for the past couple of years so um with that resurgence and daming mga industries yung pinasukan niya and one of the industries that it disrupted is of course yung education so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the now being developed workflow best practices and then from there we'll summarize kung paano natin magagawa yon into crafting and designing our own AR or VR experiences so we'll summarize those for you and then we'll summarize the utility of AR and VR in education as well Maraming salamat. We're excited, no, Sir, uh, Sir Ramil. And uh, of course, good luck on your session. Teachers, okay? we'll be in the chat uh, if ever you need us. Oh, will be, uh, and, uh, Sir Franco, to add lang pala, mamaya, um, we'll be having, like Sir Franco said, uh, a short demo lang. I created a VR room for you guys, a web VR room. And then, uh, pwede tayo pumasok doon. So we'll try to uh, conduct a class there. I've actually done it in my classrooms na. And the uh, students really, really enjoy it. So you'll get to see yourself as an avatar for for this exercise, and um, I'm very excited to uh, to to share the experience with you guys, and uh, hope to see you there. Mamaya sa bandang dulo. Yan, maraming salamat po. Yan, I'm I'm ready. Um, um, sent. No, I'm about to ask our teachers to send me a message by um Facebook Messenger to um ano to secure a slot. We have only um, nine slots po, kasi akin na po yung isa <laughs> for for the demonstration. Okay. So, yan, um, Sir Emil, we're ready. I'll be now um, putting in your presentation. Good luck, Sir Emil. Sir, salamat. Thank you. Okay, so, um, good afternoon or good evening ba? Good afternoon pa lang tayo. Okay, so, good afternoon, everybody. Um, <clears throat> today, like I said kanina, the uh, title of our topic is how to use AR and VR technology in designing quality student, uh, student experiences. So this is going to be our focal point, the design part for AR and VR, and especially how we can utilize it in an academic setting. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into the topic. So I included this here, but basically uh, what Sir Jake said earlier. So again, uh, I'd just like to introduce myself. My name is Amir Buiko. I'm an animator and an educator. And um, uh, like I said, Kenina, I graduated from the Illinois Institute of Art in Schaumburg, Chicago, with a degree in multimedia arts, where I also majored in animation. And uh, this is basically my professional clarification. I'm a 3D artist and um, animator. And um, for my experience, previously I was former head of the animation program for I Academy Senior High School. And um, currently, college faculty member for the animation department of the I Academy School of Design, where I teach uh, design for 2D, 3D, and also animation for augmented and then virtual reality. And um, also currently taking up my master's in 3D animation. Okay, so that's a little bit of background about myself. So with that said, uh, welcome everybody to this session. I hope you'll get uh, something out of this. So without further ado, let's dive into the topic. Okay, so using AR and VR tech in designing quality student experiences. So I guess the very first thing before we go ahead and talk about AR and VR technology, um, we need to have a valid starting point, right? So our starting point is immersive technology, okay? Because AR and VR are both part of a larger umbrella of uh, immersive technology. So what is immersive technology? So if you could summarize immersive technology, it's technology that utilizes virtual content and then adds it, superimposes it into a physical environment. As you can see in this GIF right there, this is actually a representation of what a physical, uh, let's say, machine operator would look like and what a um, virtual a machine operator would operate. So again, it's taking virtual content, usually in the form of uh, computer-generated graphics, whether it's in 2D and 3D, and superimposing it in a physical environment. So that's uh, immersive technology, okay? So like I said, if I could just read this out loud, uh, immersive technologies basically create distinct experiences by merging the physical world with a, di a digital or simulated reality. So we're basically injecting something that doesn't exist inside of our physical world. So that's immersive technology. And for immersive technology, augmented reality and virtual reality are two principal types of immersive technology. And then moving forward, when we say AR, 
uh, for this session, we basically mean augmented reality. And when we say VR, um, we're going to mean virtual reality with that. So again, these are uh, two types of immersive technology and they're by no means exhaustive when it comes to immersive technology. There are also um, holograms, um, mga additional na mga types of immersive technology, but these two right now are basically the uh, principal types and the one that's being most commonly used and the most ubiquitous, you can see it uh, all around industries and um, they're practically available everywhere because of their platform, okay? So these two technologies, yung uh, principal types of uh, immersive technology, they share uh, many of the same qualities. So they're similar. The main difference is uh, the user experience. And Mamaya will uh, talk about the distinction between both. And we'll also talk about the uh, similarities that these two technologies share. Okay. So next, so now that we've established that these are immersive technology or it's part of immersive technology and that immersive technology basically merges virtual content with the physical world, let's take a look at uh, a general consensus of what um, these technology, uh, technological terms entail, okay? So like we said kanina, augmented reality, it adds digital ele uh, elements to a live view and it's often used by a uh, camera or a smartphone. So that's why this technology is really taking off for the past couple of years. It's because it utilizes a smartphone and almost everybody has a smartphone right now or has access to something like that. So that's why um, augmented reality as a technology platform is really, really moving forward. Okay, so this is how it looks like. So you can see that image on the right right there. So you see that woolly mammoth. Of course, we know that this doesn't exist anymore, but with the uh, technology of augmented reality, we can actually uh, create not just pictures of it, but interactive with uh, animation. So it just adds another dimension to it, which uh, printed material cannot really do. So as you can see, that's uh, a representation of augmented reality. Okay. So the next one is virtual reality. Ang pagkaiba ng virtual reality sa augmented reality is that augmented reality uses your physical world. So you still know that you exist in a physical space. Like for example, this room. If I add uh, images or 3D images floating around me, I would still know that I exist in this physical space that I belong to. But as a virtual reality, it implies a complete shutdown. So fully immersed ka. Um, tawag mo nga dito. You basically shut out the, uh, the physical world. And um, right now, uh, in order to experience this full immersion, you need uh, headsets. Okay, so mga ganito mga virtual reality headsets. So if you have this and you uh, basically uh, use them, it covers your eyes. So when it covers your eyes, you're basically looking through a VR headset na screen. And that gives you a feeling of full immersion inside of the virtual world. So if you could take a look at this image example right here. So this is basically what we would look like if we were wearing a virtual reality headset so as you can see the eyes are fully covered and what you're looking at is a screen and on that screen you're actually seeing a fully immersive uh 3d environment okay so mamaya will go ahead and try to see if we can recreate that experience using a web browser through web vr okay so moving forward let's go and uh take a look at the last one so mixed reality is a technology that combines elements of both AR and VR. Okay, so this is an example from Microsoft HoloLens. As you can see, they have this virtual meeting. Uh, they have four people on site and they're all sharing uh, virtual elements and they have uh, two virtual presences, okay? But again, it's interactive. Now, tawag mga dito. So again, it, it utilizes both elements of both, uh, of both AR and VR. So it utilizes full immersion with the headset and goggles, but it also utilizes the environment pa rin nila, okay? So slight differences, uh, it's basically just the experience of the user that's different. So again, just to clarify, pag AR, you're still aware of your physical surrounding. For VR, you're fully immersed in the experience. And for mixed reality, it's a combination of both. Now, finally, we have something called XR. Now, this is actually the standard I was saying, Kanina Web VR, 
uh, that uh, API actually is uh, deprecated na. It's still being archived for historical preferences, but the term right now that's being used is WebXR. XR stands for extended reality, and extended reality is the umbrella term that covers all of the technologies that enhance our senses. So when we say XR, it's basically the um, lahat na lahat na ng immersive technology. So augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, or any variation that can cause the same kind of uh, virtual experience. Okay, so whether they're providing additional information about the actual world or creating something totally unreal, they would all fall under XR. So these are the terms that we need to be aware of. Just a quick background when it comes to uh, AR, VR, MR, and then XR. So yun yung mga differences nila. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and continue. Um, AR and VR right now are uh, being used in a lot of industries. Uh, it's being used in healthcare, it's being used in the uh, military, and of course, entertainment is still the biggest uh, industry that utilizes both AR and uh, VR. However, um, education is one of the key industries being disrupted by this technology. So uh, with that said, we need to find out as educators what, um, what our role is with this new technology. Okay, so AR and VR in education systems will ensure that students are equipped with the right skills to navigate this technology. So why do students need to, to um, knowledgeably know how to navigate this technology? Um, recent statistics with regards to uh, video game users, because this is how this technology was actually developed to the video game industry. Recent statistics on the number of video game users around the world globally are now uh, being put at one third of the population. Okay, so yung younger generation ngayon, yung mga elementary growing up, ang trend ng uh, users na yun are just slowly rising. So as they grow older, you'll have a population that's very familiar with this kind of environment. And AR and VR is placed in a very unique situation to be able to deliver educational content to these kids. Because right now, the majority of content for AR and VR is still games. So as educators, um, kailangan we need to get in on this, okay? So that we could actually present an alternative content which is uh, more academically um, uh, tawag mga dito, more academically geared instead of just entertainment content, which is the majority of the games right now. Okay, so again, uh, if I could just repeat this, uh, AR and VR uh, education systems will ensure that students are equipped to navigate this technology. They would be able to judge yung content if it is good or not. Okay, so that's why we need to also as educators, we need to be aware of how to use this platform for our um, academic purposes as well. All right. So uh, in my preparation for this uh, presentation, I came up uh, with a research, 2021 research, actually pretty recent, um, with regards to AR and VR use in educational um, in education. It shows that they have a um, the students achieve a uh, deeper student engagement. They're more motivated and uh, there's better learning performance by modifying and enhancing real life education. For me personally, from an empirical uh, perspective, if I could share your experience go and sharing AR with students, it's something that they're familiar with. So when they see it for education, um, they mostly associate it kasi, with games. And there's always that association of interaction and then discovery. If I associate, or if, I'm sorry, if I utilize it for class, must engage yung students. And this research actually backs it up. And um, again, this is a recent research, so we'll not go into uh, entire detail about it, but suffice it to say that the researchers came up with the same conclusion where they found out that uh, the use of this technology actually in, um, deepens the engagement of the students, have motivated learning, and better learning performance. Okay, so the source for that is uh, called Exploring Immersive Technology and Education for Smart Cities. It's a 2021 research paper by the following. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. I feel like I will murder their last names. I'm going to try. Ganandurai, uh, uh, Thirumurugan, and Venutina. Uh, I hope I got those right. I just wanted to give uh, credit to those as a background for uh, the presentation that we're showing right now. So to continue, uh, with that said, um, if we establish that, uh, I guess the first way, uh, the first step is to find out how we can use, how we can actually use AR and VR in education. So for this presentation, uh, we are going to give an overview. 
Okay, so of course, uh, these are just three basic and fundamental ways to use it. You're only limited by your creativity and how to utilize this platform. And this platform is hasn't been exhausted yet. Yung AR and VR, as technology hasn't been exhausted yet, there's still so many ways that we can integrate or use this creatively. But um, as a basic use in education, we have three fundamental uses for it. So let's move forward and take a look at what those are. So before we figure out a way to use them, but uh, yeah, we need to cl uh, clearly define its utility. Okay. So in order to efficiently use AR and VR, we need to be able to clearly define its utility. Because using AR for the sake of AR is actually not really the most efficient use of the technology. So we have to be very sure of how we're going to use it inside of the classroom. Uh, we have to clearly define its utility in order to be able to get the most out of it, okay? So the reason for this is, uh, again, another research that I encountered while um, preparing this topic. There is a research by uh, European researchers, uh, 2019 research by uh, Norwegian uh, researchers and a Macedonian professor. Um, the research and methodology for designing educational AR and VR games. And the research indicated the following. When technology is used in conjunction with effective pedagogical strategies, new potential for improving quality of teaching and learning experiences are opened up. So uh, the utility is, is that we have to use it in conjunction with whatever pedagogical strategy that we're using in school. But the one thing that we have to consider that the use of AR and VR falls under uh, non-traditional non-traditional teaching, okay? So we can probably try to be creative with our pedag pedagogical approach, but when we utilize AR and VR in classroom, it has to be within the bounds of uh, our pedagogical strategy. So it's still really important because this teacher is still a guide. Uh, bottom line, AR and VR is a tool. The teacher will still guide the students on how their um, education is going to unfold. So again, that's the first point. Uh, it has to be used in conjunction with a pedagogical strategy. So next, I actually just included the link here. Again, these are some very, very hard to pronounce last names, but the uh, title of the research paper is called Design Thinking Methodology for Increasing Quality of Experience for Augmented Reality Educational Games. For this research, they actually created an augmented reality educational game with a uh, goal to increase student engagement. So let's take a look at the results of the research. So the research described how they utilize design thinking methodology to propose a model for integration of uh, games in education. So methodology nila defines the process of creating educational games starting from the students' attitudes and needs and moving towards a needed educational outcome. So they considered the student needs uh, and then attitudes. And then from there, they designed the AR experience that they were going to create for the students with which to base their data and results from. And um, they were able to create an example case study and a prototype game was uh, developed through that in order to illustrate, of course, the possibilities and benefits of the proposed methodology. So now from there, um, the research concluded uh, from, from the game that they created and its testing that the game was successful and it served the purpose, Begin, again, because of the design. So they had a very specific outcome, uh, outcome that they wanted, to, they wanted to create, okay? And the utmost important benefit that the students were able to derive from the game was that they would like to use them for educational purposes. Again, it goes back to the original intent for the use of AR and VR, which was originally developed, of course, for games and entertainment. So when we're trying to make that shift into uh, the educational um, uh, industry, we need to be able to define its utility first before we actually design um, a use or design an experience and how we're going to use it inside of the classroom, okay? So now from there, they were able to achieve a balance between education and then uh, student engagement. And again, it goes to list on the details for, for um, what they were able to do on that paper. So. Um, again, I'll probably share it later, pero yun lang yung medyo ang hirap na pronounce sa mga last name nila. But they were uh, Norwegian mga uh, researchers that came up with design methodology to come up with games based, of course, on pedagogical strategies. Now, with this approach in mind, let's ex uh, explore three fundamental ways to use AR and VR in the classroom. 
so one of the simplest ways to uh, uh, basically use AR and VR in the classroom is its introduction in the traditional classroom. So to use it as a visual aid, okay? So there are a lot of complex um, ideas or concepts that uh, can actually benefit from illustration in 3D. So the best and one of the most straightforward ways is just to introduce it directly to the class. We'll take a look at some examples in a bit, but again, AR and VR is a teaching prop. So that's one of the simplest and most direct way to use AR and VR inside of a classroom as a teaching prop to be able to illustrate complex ideas, be able to, um, to, to visualize it or to show it, to share it in three-dimensional form. So an example of that would be uh, the solar system. So uh, we're going to take a look at some, um, what do you call this? some AR programs later on, and you can see that how easy it is to create uh, illustrations of uh, uh, like solar systems, um, botanical um, elements, plants, and then wildlife. And uh, the thing about this is that there are so many assets out there right now, and so many assets that are available for free, that uh, it's really, really accessible, okay? And of course, if we support our textbook materials with our example, it adds another dimension to the learning process. And again, uh, when we're using this, we're not only adding another dimension, we're actually talking in, or we're actually communicating to our students in a language that they're very familiar with, okay? So again, it's an innovative and practical illustration of, uh, it could help illustrate complicated concepts. All right, so next, the use of AR and VR enabled worksheets and homework. So we've all done homework on paper before, okay? So it has its utility. Pero uh, we can add another dimension for worksheets and homeworks by adding AR and VR integration to it. So for example, this is an example of how uh, medical textbooks or medical worksheets uh, integrate um, 3D elements utilizing AR technology. So it can help the students handle their homework and assignments better, especially when they're not interacting with an educator with AR-enabled worksheets. Now, um, this, again, has also been uh, magnified, especially during the pandemic when everybody was working from home. So AR actually adds another dimension to that because yun nga, we are all limited by uh, space and restrictions. So these worksheets could create something that's more interactive with the students. And uh, finally, the last uh, way that we're going to take a look at is the use of virtual, sp uh, I'm sorry, visual yung nakalagay dito, dapat virtual yun. So I'm sorry about that, that's my typo. Uh, the use of virtual spaces and lab environments. So how is this uh, applicable for us or how is this practical for us? Uh, the pandemic has uh, actually opened a lot of possibilities for, for online learning. And it also uh, highlighted uh, the limitations of face-to-face, -face, especially uh, in the face of restrictions and quarantines. So virtual spaces can actually simulate locations that can be impeded, like we said, with restrictions or accessibility. So Mamiya, we're going to create a uh, virtual space. And then um, you can see that you can actually uh, attend as an avatar. And then um, we can overcome your student engagement because you'll actually be seeing them. Pero yung nga lang, it's an online presence, but it's it's a unique experience. So uh, Mamiya, we're, go we're gonna walk through that. So again, these are the three ways that we're going to take a look at for, for this presentation. We're going to take a look at AR and VR first and foremost as uh, teaching props. And then we're also going to take a look at how AR and VR enabled worksheets and homeworks can actually assist or add another dimension to um, worksheets and um, homework for students. And uh, last but not the least, we'll also take a look at an example of how to create a virtual space for students, okay? So, yun yung three ways na i-cover natin for this presentation. So, AR and VR as a teaching prop. So, let's start with the first one. So, like you said kanina, uh, AR and VR tools can help teachers create engaging content 
that spark student curiosity and help them achieve academic success, right? Now, if you support uh, textbook materials with their example, it will add another dimension to the learning process. And again, this process is effective because this is mostly what kids deal with when they're dealing with online content, they're dealing with 3D materials, they're dealing with graphics. And uh, illustrating something in AR and VR is a uh, whole new experience because you'll actually be able to see concepts in uh, virtual space in 360. Okay, so an example natin is this one from Assembler EDU. Um, the reason why I chose this is because they have um, so many things that uh, are geared for education. So I'm not in any way connected to this company. And the other thing that uh, I chose this is because they have a free account. So this is what I'm utilizing right now. So your free account nila. But it's only limited. So there are uh, size, file size limitations that you can use. But as you can see, it's tailored to uh, uh, specifically for educational needs. I actually already downloaded some experiences over here. Let's see if it went back to, okay. So this one is a microscope. So if you take a look at this, in microscope na to, I'm navigating this microscope in 3D space. I can zoom in and zoom out and it will tell me the parts of this microscope, okay? So this is something, uh, that we can utilize with together with textbooks, okay? So, and like I said, there's so many uh, free the 3D <clears throat> elements out there. You could actually embed this link inside of, uh, what do you call that? You can embed this link inside of a um, LMS or tawag uh, dito, or <clears throat> you could add a marker to this. Your marker is like an image where you can point, point your phone at it, and then it will pop up, and then it will show up in your phone's camera as part of your environment. Okay, pero for the free account, there is a limited number of markers only. So just uh, using this just to show you guys what um, um, some of the AR examples inside of Assembler EDU. And we also have math here. If you click start on this, again, this is something that you guys can navigate around. It will show you some mathematical formulas, some samples, descriptions, and then again, you can start off with a free account and try to figure out uh, the best use that you can. So these are some of the topics that you can use over here. You also have chemistry, and then you just click on this. There are a lot of Indonesian uh, examples over here. So they're sharing that with uh, other, um, <clears throat> what you call that, educators as well. But you can see, uh, these are all the um, accessible and free na mga materials that you can use out of the box for this, okay? So periodic table in uh, 3D. So again, so this is something that's going to be a little bit more um, interactive for students. And again, when we use this, um, the reason why this is so helpful is that it communicates or it uh, basically communicates with the students on their base level when they're playing games, they're usually utilizing this kind of navigation as well. But if, with the use of like educational apps like this, you basically introduce, uh, introducing them to the concept that um, that uh, I'm sorry, that video games aren't limited to what they normally see for entertainment. Um, you would have a lot of um, additional na mga tawag mga dito. You have a lot of additional na mga uh, options that are actually more geared towards learning and um, education. So this is Assembler EDU. So uh, one of the uh, quickest ways or fastest ways to include um, AR and VR as a teaching prop. So the link is over here and uh, maybe Sir Franco can share it in the uh, comment section as well. All right, so for the next one, <clears throat> We are going to use AR enabled worksheets and homework. So AR can also help, like I said, Kanina, um, handle their homework when they're not being uh, supervised by an educator with AR enabled worksheets. So this is the example that we showed. But for this, uh, tawag mga dito, 
let me just go ahead and uh, move forward. Okay, so I think, yeah, okay. So I think yung slides could just went back a little bit. So this is the actual slide. So for AR uh, and VR enabled worksheets in the home, in homeworks, I actually created um, an example over here. So this slide represents an able, uh, a VR enabled worksheet with a QR code image to the right. So this is something that I created for um, um, as part for of this uh, workshop, but this is utilizing uh, Adobe Aero. This is what I'm using for my classes. When they design kami ng mga AR experiences, this is what we're using. So as an example, uh, the italicized text, let's say this is your uh, worksheet. So the statement is, Designing for VR and AR presents a whole new set of challenges and adds complexity to an already complex job. AR developers have found that a lot of the design considerations for extended reality can be boiled down to a few simple concepts. And then you have this QR code right here. The limitations for Adobe Aero right now is that it only works in iOS, uh, but I had to share this because this is what we're using at school. And uh, the reason why we're big on um, this because it works well with all the other Adobe design products. Okay, so we just we just that. And right now as well, it's free. You can download the mobile app for free. It's in its beta staging. Um, nasa beta stage ngayon, so you can download yung desktop nito. You just need a Creative Cloud account. But right now it's still free. So it's also something that you can get in on the ground up. So going back here, so this is the text for the workshop. And then for the students to find out what AR developers uh, boil down the uh, concepts for design, you have to click your phone on this, on this QR code, and then it will show up yung, yung concepts na to. So this is the uh, source. So Adobe Aero, right now it's on its beta stage, so it's free. So if you download it here on this link, you should be able to um, uh, utilize this. Unfortunately, uh, right now it's only supporting iOS. So but again, it's another one that you can get now, you can use for free. So what do students see when they uh, click on this? So this is basically my, uh, this is my workstation where I work. And as you can see here on the right, this is the QR code. This is the uh, Adobe Aero workspace. So if you click here, so this is what I was created. So nandito yung AR workflow overview. So this is how we can utilize or how we can integrate um, AR with uh, a worksheet. So you include a QR code and then um, you include in the worksheet that there are things that uh, they need to discover with the use of AR. So you'll find out if they were able to use it if they can guess yung AR workflow overview. Okay, so again, this is the AR workflow overview. All right, so moving on to the next slide. Okay, so there you go. Okay, so I think lag na siya ng konti. So this is an AR workflow overview. Now, uh, at the start of this uh, talk kanina, um, again, like we said, we will be covering a little bit of background about the use of uh, AR in education, the research behind it, and uh, most importantly, we'll try to take a look at how to be how to design, how to be able to de design AR experiences efficiently. Now, AR is something new. Uh, if you remember the text from the slide before this, um, it says that designing is already a complex job. But if you add another dimension to it, you add uh, augmented reality dimension to it or virtual reality dimension to it, you complicate what is already a complex job. Now, before that, before um, AR really exploded into the scene and to other industries, there wasn't really a set or a workflow designed to create effective AR experiences. But this one is from Adobe. And uh, as you can see here, that's the reason why I'm sharing this is uh, the industry is trying to standardize the way to uh, approach yung AR and how to work on it. So 
Kasi it's important when you're trying to present work to clients or when you're trying to come up with a system, you need to be able to, to chart your progress in such a way that you can either explain it to clients or that you can track your progress as well for your project. So it usually starts with the goal. So what do you want to do? So this is, um, this is where the three ways comes in. So what is your goal? Are you trying to design an AR experience to create a teaching prop? Are you trying to design an AR experience to use as a part of a worksheet or homework? Or are you trying to design an AR VR experience as a virtual space? So you have to establish your goal first. Kung ano yung gusto mo yung design. We establish the utility so we can establish kung paano natin siya i-design. And once you have that, normally sketches or ideation come next. Okay, so we need to sketch like a small uh, flow chart of what the experience is going to be. And then after that, you can create some prototypes in it, and then you create your assets. Now, the good thing about using AR and VR is that there are so many assets that are available out there. Okay, and then once you have that asset creation, then you do an AR scene layout, and then you add interactions or animations. And then after that, you test out the AR experience, and then you can share it with others. So again, before that, wala to, wala ang standard na AR workflow overview. But because of the uh, demand for AR content right now, um, AR designers are trying to standardize the approach on how to design. So this is from um, Adobe itself, from the documentation of Aero, and this is their uh, proposed AR workflow overview. And uh, next step natin, let's try to see if we can come up with an AR design based on that kind of workflow. So I'll be going back and forth with uh, this example, but this is the, uh, uh, what do you call this? This is the interface for Adobe Aero. So when you open it up, it's going to look like this. So this is just to give you guys an idea of um, an AR and a VR um, interface, okay? So I'm going to click new file here. Okay, so uh, let's name this. Akadesha test. Oh, I think I'm on my five iteration. So I'm going to name this just Akadesha test number five. And I'm going to click OK. So it will open up to this. Okay, so uh, the reason why I'm sharing this is that um, it's good to have an idea of how to navigate inside of the um, AR experience so that we can uh, have an idea of how to create the experience itself. Okay, so it's basically set up like a uh, 3D program. So you navigate inside of this viewport, and uh, the tools that you have are here on the left side. So I'm just going to go through them. So this one right here, this is called an orbit tool. So it basically orbits around this uh, 3D space that you have here. Uh, this one is your pan tool. So once you have that set, it will basically move your environment to the left and to the right. And this is your zoom in and then your zoom out. Okay. Now, these are your starter assets. And as you can see, there are so many assets that you could use here, from animatable assets to directable characters to nature to letters to origami forests to space exploration pack. So, like we said, Kanina, you can create Saturn or um, <clears throat> tawag mga dito. Um, planets, planetary elements, so on and so forth. So for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and create like a very simple abstract shape. Lang. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at and do something a little bit interesting. So let's use a star. Okay, so as you can see, you just click on it and it will automatically load up here. And then I'm going to go back to my orbit tool. So I have it orbiting in space right now. So again, uh, if you look at our, uh, sorry, if you look at our guide right here, goal, prototype, so gasset creation atayo, it's now time to the AR scene layout, and then we'll do uh, an animation, and then we'll test it out, and then share it with others. Okay, so from here, um, the layout basically just means the space that the uh, AR experience is going to be occurring. So from here, I'm going to go to uh, a behavior builder, it's on the lower left side. And then with this selected, I'm going to create a trigger. So you could have uh, something occur at the start. So when the AR experience is open, something is going to happen right away. But what we're going to do is we're going to create interaction. So tap. So on tap, uh, it's going to ask you, there's a plus sign here for action. 
So what we're going to do is we're just going to have this bounce. Okay. So it's going to bounce 10 centimeters. And then we could have it go on an infinite bounce. Again, this is just to show how quick it is to create um, assets and uh, an experience right here. And in order to uh, go ahead and uh, what do you call this, preview this, you can go ahead and hit play. So as you can see, you already have something that kind of looks like this. And on preview mode over here from the top right, this is your uh, ground plane. And when you click this, so it's automatically going to bounce. And of course, you could also have this disappear. You could have this rotate. And then from here, once you're OK with this experience, you can just go ahead and just click Share and create link. And uh, uh, we'll also talk about some of the uh, drawbacks for technology. So most of them are online based. And uh, they're online based, uh, we're dependent on internet technology. So of course it can sometimes uh, go ahead and uh, slow our, um, our production. So let me just go ahead and try to see if I could uh, redo that. There you go. So it launched now, the link was created successfully and this is the uh, QR code. So you can just save this QR code, you can download it and then if I post it or send it out as part of a PDF, if you point your phone at it um, and then you open up, uh, you open it up in um, Adobe Aero the app. Unfortunately, like I said, right now it's only being supported in iOS. But uh, if you play that or if you point this, if you point your phone to this QR code, you can open it up in Adobe Aero, and then this is the experience that you will see. Okay, so this will actually integrate inside of your environment. And this is how easy it is to create uh, um, an AR experience. And of course, you can use text, you can use images, so on and so forth. You can just import additional files as needed. All right. So this is the use of Adobe Aero for this experience. Okay, so let me just uh, go ahead and minimize that. And let's continue with our presentation. So moving forward, OK, so I think we uh, kind of uh, need to go back a little bit, I think. So go back here. So let's start here. All right, there you go. OK, so uh, that's basically the AR workflow. So when we design, just to reiterate, we design, we um, figure out first how we're going to use it. So are we going to use it as a teaching prop? Are we going to use it as a uh, as a uh, part of a worksheet or part of a homework? Or are we going to use a virtual space? So once we've established what we're going to do, we uh, have that as set our goals. We now try to ideate it with sketches or storyboards. So you can just write it down. And then you can prototype it as well. Uh, try to figure out how the uh, experience is going to play out. And then once you have that, then you go ahead with the asset creation. So for asset creation, you could either create assets from scratch if you're comfortable enough to do it, or you can utilize free assets online, right? So once that's done, you lay it out in the uh, 3D environment that we shared Kanina. And then uh, from there, you build it out with the animations that's built in with the tool that you're using. And then you test it out. And then after that, you can publish it. Again, you'll need the QR code if you want it part as a, work as, as a worksheet. But if you just want to share it as a prop, again, there are other um, experiences that are more geared towards that. Okay. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, yung final na ano natin. So AR and VR for um, visual spaces. Virtual spaces actually happen to and then lab environments. So, an AR and VR can actually create a virtual space and lab environment that's designed to simulate locations that are otherwise going to be impeded by restrictions or accessibility. Uh, virtual classroom again, it's a uh, it's a conferencing tool. It's a way to communicate where instructors and participants can engage with each other and uh, with learning material. The difference lang dito is that's a virtual classroom. Um, 
virtual classrooms actually have an added set of features that are essential to a learning environment. So, ang difference ng AR classroom, uh, I'm sorry, ang VR classroom with AR classroom is that it creates an entire environment. So, sa AR kasi, uh, it's limited by space. So, you're limited by space, you're limited by the platform. For VR, you are actually going to create your own space. So, you have more freedom with this. And uh, you're basically trying to experience game environment in an educational or academic setting. So, I guess um, I can explain it, but it's much better that we experience this. Okay? So, moving forward here. AR for visual spaces. This is what we're going to use, Mozilla Hubs. Now, again, this is really, really good because Mozilla Hubs is open source. All right? So, Mozilla Hubs was designed by Mozilla Labs. And um, they designed this um, this hubs na ano, yung hubs na space using uh, WebVR. So again, WebVR is an API. It's a programming interface. And they designed it with a goal to make VR accessible to everybody. Because right now, in order to experience VR, or before this, in order to experience VR, you need to have a headset. So without the headset, uh, previously it wasn't able, uh, it wasn't possible to experience VR. Web VR actually kind of bridges that gap. So what it does is it creates the same VR environment, pero inside of a web browser. Okay. Pero uh, yung kagandahan nito is that you can either use a web browser, but you can also use your headset with it. So if you use your headset, you can actually experience it in full VR. But that is what it does. Just a uh, side note lang. Yung web VR na API is already deprecated. It's been replaced by WebXR. Pero um, uh, the uh, web VR page is actually uh, um, saved for posterity. And like, I still kind of use it because it's clear because it's a WebXR. Okay, so again, just a side note. So Hubs is a VR chat room designed for every headset and browser. So again, this is yung kagandahan niya, and it's also open source. It explores how communication and mixed reality can come to life. So like again, I said, I can explain it till I turn blue in the face here, but it's much better to experience this. All right? So ang scenes natin are created by Spoke. It's an online-based 3D scene and environment editor for Mozilla Hubs. And uh, depending on the time that we have later, I can go ahead and walk you through yung Spoke. And we can create something really quick. I can show you how quick it is to create a 3D scene or a 3D room inside of Spoke. And again, all of this is open source. And then the program itself, yung Spoke na to, is online based. So you don't need to, you don't need any additional software. You don't need uh, very powerful computers. Okay, of course, you just need to have like a decent machine, a standard lang. But it will basically open up and run yung yung programs na to. Okay, so like I said, you can describe all of this, but the best way to uh, do this is to really just get into it. But before we do that, uh, again, VR classroom guides. Another challenge here is that uh, classroom management is different inside of a VR setting. So it's a whole new set of classroom management. And of course, navigation is also something that we need to explain at the start. So to enter, you can just right click and point your cursor inside of the room. Our navigation is uh, AWSD. For those that are familiar with games, these are very familiar keys. Uh, left mouse button to orbit. And then use the chat box for questions and keep mic on mute. Um, normally, this is what I do for like classes. Okay. Pero for this demo, uh, let's keep our mic on. Okay, so we only have 10 people inside of the VR classroom mamaya, so we can keep our mics on. Uh, just be aware, our mics are also proximity devices. So pag malayo kayo sa akin, um, tawag mga dito, I won't be able to hear you. When I say malayo kayo sa akin, ang makikita nyo mamaya is an avatar of myself. Okay, so makikita nyo avatar. So, and then yung avatar na dun, it moves inside of the 3D classroom. So if you want to say something, you need to move closer to, to the avatar and then communicate. All right. So that's how we're going to use it. Um, again, this is something that I use for uh, as a guideline for my 3D classrooms. I ask them to use their own name with their avatar. And of course, uh, whether we're in VR space, whether we're in um, actual classrooms, 
we always need to be mindful and respectful of others in the room. Treat it as if it's a normal classroom. Um, again, this is something that I use in class lang, so I always reiterate that we all have the responsibility of keeping the VR classroom a safe, productive, and creative environment. And I also add uh, admin the right to close the room, just so they know that we can close the room anytime. All right. So with that said, uh, eto yung navigating guides natin. Uh, Sir Franco, do we have yung mga ano natin, yung mag-join sa, sa web VR classroom? Sir Emil, meron na pong ibang naka-join. Kaya lang po ah, okay, parang... Na sila, sa loob. Loob. Yes, ako rin po nasa okay. loob din. Sige, so I'm going to go ahead and join na. So for those of you, uh, there, this is um, your Akadisha classroom. So when you click on that, it's basically going to open up here. And then it's going to ask you to join the room. So I'm just going to click join. So as you can see, I have my mic here. You can test my audio right there. So baka magkaroon tayo mamaya ng konting echo. Pero this is what we're going to do. Then click enter. So as we enter, so we have Jet Latosa there. Hi Jet, uh, can you hear me? So that's Jet right there. Okay, so this is our classroom, basically. Sure. Ayun, no. So, Jet, good afternoon. All right, so we have other people inside of the classroom. Ayun, meron pa tao sa loob. Okay, so class, baka merong uh, konting echo nito. So, um, just gonna go ahead inside to the classroom. So, pag nag-block siya, just right-click and then point to wherever, okay? Uh, wherever inside of the classroom. All right. So this is our classroom. So this is our VR classroom. And we also have a film viewing the room. Okay. So Mamaya will go there. Or actually, we can go ahead and explore this. Ang kagandaan din dito sa film viewing room natin is that if you have like film viewing sessions with your students, Sometimes kasi we're not sure, especially if it's an online class, if they're, they're viewing. But with this one, you can actually see them right here. And the uh, good thing about this is the audio for this is also proximity-based. So if I move away from this, hindi ko na siya maririnig. So nawawala yung volume. So the volume for the, for the uh, film right here is basically just inside. Augmented okay. reality. And let employees get hands on practice. So, right now, as a teacher, I can see if the students are here, if they're watching. Reality has eliminated the time and location barriers. And then you can actually ask questions while you're viewing the film. You can pause the film as well. You can experience the end. And then you can ask questions while the students are viewing the film. Then you can go ahead and think with them. So this experience actually answers the, answers the limitations imposed by the pandemic. And it also uh, creates some sort of student engagement where you can see the students right here in real time. And you can conduct lessons here. So right now I'm going to show you guys how we can conduct lessons here by bringing my slides inside of the classroom. Okay, so from here, we start off with an empty wall. Okay. And then from this wall, I'm just going to hit share. I'm sorry, hit place. And then I'm going to upload. I'm going to hit this, yung marker na yun. I'm just going to move this to the side for now. And then I'm just going to upload my, uh, I prepared a uh, PDF presentation here. So... All right, so it should be here. So, glitlan glasses. Uh, all right, there you go. All right, so just it create object, and then automatically and na siya. Okay, so now from there, let me just go ahead and increase this in size nito, and then. I'm going to pin this so that it doesn't move. Okay, and then can I call the class now? 
Okay, so yung mga students natin, sana kayo. So, magliliso na tayo dito. So, this is how easy it is. Oh, so, parang isa lang yung student ko. Ah. So, yung iba, sana. So, I can see that we only have two people here inside of the classroom. Nag-absent sila. Ayun. So, parang ganito, class. Uh, for those of you that are out there, it feels like an actual classroom. But this is uh, a game environment, technically. Pero uh, the game environment is not used to play games. It's actually used to conduct a class. And then from here, uh, we use traditional methods, except on a virtual platform. So from here, um, tawag mo nga dito, um, si Mr. Latoza can see the lesson for today. So our lesson for today is uh, AR and VR, and then the immersive use of technology in education. So the very first point here, so I could just go ahead and explain to them. So when you're designing something in AR and VR, you need to generate a AR VR idea first, and uh, we need to establish its academic utility. Again, we're going back to the points that we created. So if you have an idea, you need to establish its academic utility first, how it's going to use and what kind of pedagogical um, system um, are you going to achieve with uh, tawag mga dito? What kind of pedagogical system, uh, I'm sorry, pedagogical system are you going to base your uh, uh, AR and VR experiences, okay? So, Mr. Latosa, do you have any questions with regards to this first point? So, Actually, sir, I'm just trying to uh, try approximate it. Oh, so, ito, pero parang nasa classroom tayo ngayon, di ba? So, nag-discuss tayo ng ganito. Oh, good afternoon, Sir Franco. Oh, so, Sir Franco, I'm presenting my slides. So, ito yung first point natin for this lesson. So, we are talking about the design for AR and VR, right? So, this is my PDF. I just showed you guys how to load this up. It's a uh, one, two, three, four, five page now PDF. So the first point is that if you have an AR VR idea, you need to establish its academic utility first. So that means how are you going to use it? What kind of uh, pedagogical system are you uh, are you um, designing in AR uh, VR experience mo na meet? Okay. So basically, this is our uh, class right now. So let's go ahead to the next slide. When you're designing something for AR and VR, a first consideration is you need to design for safety. Okay? Because, uh, tawag mo nga dito, ang AR and VR, they create graphic elements that do not exist, virtual. So for AR, you're actually creating uh, things that interact with the physical world. So that can cause some kind of confusion. So when you're designing something, you should always take that into consideration. Another thing about that is that when you're designing something, you're also considering safety for virtual reality users, especially if they're using headsets. Because they're not aware of their physical surroundings, so it's easy to get injured with that. So the first thing that you should consider is always design for safety, okay? So that's what we have over there. So design for safety. So next slide ko, integrate interaction. What makes AR and VR compelling as, com as, opposed, to, um, as opposed to other um, teaching tools is that you can actually have interaction. Okay, the students actually interact with uh, the material. And right now, we're interacting as avatars inside of a virtual world. So we're conducting our classes here virtually. I'm using slides. Pero yung classroom natin is online. So when you design an AR and VR idea, it's easy to just design a 3D element na walang interaction. So all we have to do is just load it. But uh, in order to maximize yung technology 
is we need to create some sort of interaction with it in order na ma fully maximize natin yung student experience natin. Okay? So this is slide number three. So to continue, slide number four. So when designing AR and VR, again, like you said kanina, the design for AR and VR presents a whole new set of challenges and adds complexity to an already complex job. Okay? So we have to give it its due as well. So there's a lot of ideation uh, that's going on with it. So we need to be familiar with the tools itself. But the good news is uh, there are a lot of tools out there that are available in open source, like this one right here. So ang ginamit ko sa pagawa nito, this is open source, everything for this one. So you can easily access this. And uh, I think we actually have time to create like a really quick room just to show you guys how to create something that kind of looks like this. All right. So for all of you guys out there, so ito may mga bago tayong classmates na nandito. So I can actually check attendance, right? I can see kung sino yung present, sino yung hindi. So we have people outside. So please come in the classroom na. So to move forward, ma'am, use your W key so that you can move forward. Si Miss Mirasol, susundin ko lang yung isang student natin outside. So in order to move forward, just uh, tawag mo nga dito. Use the W key on your keyboard. So for the left, uh, just A, D. Nag-block siya, you can also jump in space by right-clicking and then forwarding to a space inside of this classroom. Okay. All right, so we still have uh, some of the classmates pa pala. Medyo nauna yung lessons natin, so babalik lang tayo really quickly. Okay, so we'll wait for the rest of the class to to come in. And then we can walk through everybody and then mag-film film showing tayo. And then we can go ahead and get started. So... Good evening. Okay, so all right. So para mag-navigate tayo, Vivian. And uh tawag mo nga dito. Just use your AWSD keys on your keyboard. So W to move forward. And then A to move to uh, from side to side. Okay? All right, so, all right, so nandito na ba tayo? Can you guys hear me? Okay, so in order for you guys to hear me, you have to move a little bit closer, okay? All right, so now from here. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to. Okay. So late lang class ah, yung keyboards ko ng stuff. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. Ah, so, ito na yung class natin. So, ito na yung classroom natin. So, from here, uh, like I said kanina, if you guys are able to see, I actually um, just uploaded a PDF file here. So, yung PDF file na to, it has uh, the lessons on how to design for, uh, tawag mga dito, uh, design techniques for AR and VR experiences. Okay. So these are basically a summary of the uh, AR workflow recommended by Adobe and uh, uh, just made it a little bit more concise, okay? All right. So sige guys, uh, while you're here, uh, kailangan ko lang mag-quickly restart. Uh, Sir Franco, 
Kailangan ko lang i-restart para medyo nag-freeze yung keyboard ko. Mag-restart lang ako. So give me uh, mga couple of minutes lang. Balik ako kagad. Uh, Sir Franco, can you please uh, acknowledge? Hello, uh, Sir Franco, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, I can hear you. First, saglit lang, sir. Mag-reset lang ako really quickly. Balik ako kagad. Reset lang ako really quickly. Oh. Uh, you can still post yung, yung classroom. Mag-reset lang ako, babalik ako kagad. Saglit na nag-freeze lang yung keyboard ko. Thank you, sir. Kamusta so, naman, Franco, ang pag-explore ah, dun sa yeah. room? Grabe, no? Pumasok ako, sir. Ano eh, sir Jake eh. Talagang... Uh, na ano ko na nakita ko at sobrang amis ako actually kasi pwede ka maglagay ng video so ingat sa yes. mga pwede ka mag film showing sa loob oh. ng inyo ano no uh, okay. virtual classrooms at that that ang definition natin ng virtual classroom na no, sir sir Jake yung mga uh, LMS natin pero ngayon yes. talaga virtual classroom Uh-oh. na talaga ano, yung nakita Correct. natin Okay. And oh, so we that, realize, no, the possibilities are so yes. much, diba? the, the, uh, and daming applications like how to use it uh, for your respective subjects and grade levels, diba? And daming pwedeng gawin to uh, maximize uh, uh, th- these technology. No? Yes, no, and actually, no, at actually, to yung um, siguro opportunity natin to actually leverage accessibility, no, sir. So, right. Jake, siyempre, no, pagdating sa yes. infrastructure, kulang sa classrooms, etc. No? So, this one, okay, dahil uh, ano siya, no, uh, on the digital space, okay, mm-hmm. uh, pwedeng, pwedeng ma-access ng mga students natin. Okay? So, maybe something that, of course, no, schools, okay, our government can definitely think about. Right. Yeah. And then, when, when kids or when our students tinker with it, Franco, uh, mabilis lang nilang matutunan yan. Di ba? So, it doesn't really take a lot for the students Uh, to be able to navigate or figure out how to um, go around the room and uh, learn. Kasi yun nga, ang, yun pa rin naman yung objective natin out of all of this, di ba? Huwag, huwag na natin makalimutan na uh, ang end goal pa rin natin is really student outcome, student learning, right? Yes. Uh, more than the fancy technology or the design elements. Pero kitang-kita natin dito, Uh, how that can still be carried out or executed quite well, di ba? Oo. Nagulat din ako nung pinapakita ni Hamil, eh, no? Uh, <laughs> and files, screen, videos, everything yes. na we do Even in the class. Even ano? Yes. Uh, and siguro, sir, ano rin, sir, sir Jake, no? This is something, I, I think we're looking at, we're, we're taking a glimpse, no? Of what's yes. possible in the next five, ten years, mm-hmm. and what education will be, no? In the next five or ten years, no, and right. we're lucky enough, no, to actually uh, start, no, looking at this one and considering this, no. So this could be like a massive trend, no, uh, in the coming years yes. in uh, inclusive education. Na yan nakabalik na. Okay. Ayan, ayan, ayan. okay. So again, like with real life, na no, meron tayong medyo mga. Uh, yeah, well, we we'll have stuff Very na. Yes. Oh. So again, I'm back, I'm back in class. So nag uh, quick break lang daw si teacher. Tapos balik na ako. Okay, so, <laughs> tayo. So hello class, balik na si teacher. May nakalimutan na ako. Kumuha ko ng eraser sa baba. So ayan na. Okay. So eto na yung lesson natin for today. So all right. So ayan, I see uh, Mr. Latosa, of course, Miss Villa Cortez. Um Mr. Uh, Dean Clifford, we also have Ms. Jezebel Lausa, and uh, Ms. Catherine Joyce. So class, uh, welcome, good evening everybody. Can you guys hear me? Okay, good okay. So class, uh, please look at the board, ito yung lesson natin for today. Uh, our lesson is uh, designing quality student experience with the use of AR and VR, okay? So ano yung mga design principles na kailangan nating isundin? The very first one is nandito sa ano natin, sa presentation natin, sa uh, virtual uh, PDF natin. First, you need to generate an AR and VR idea and establish its academic utility. Okay? So if you want to design something, you need to make sure how you're going to use it. So are you going to use it as a teaching prop? Are you going to use it as part of your worksheet? Or are you going to use it like this one? 
to basically solve yung issue of student engagement and then um, tawag mo nga dito, uh, creating a virtual space where you could actually see the students. So once that's established, the next thing that we want to do is we need to design for safety. So we need to consider the space. If it's AR, tandaan natin that we are creating visual elements to be superimposed in the real world. So this can cause confusion. Um, if you guys have heard of yung Pokemon na AR game, so it was basically an AR-based game, pero again, because it's a game, um, may mga safety issues yun. There were people that were put at risk because um, the environment was not considered properly. So what we have here is basically a summarization, a para, uh, paraphrasing, if you will, of all the uh, proposed best practices and workflows for AR, starting with academic utility and then the design for safety. Consider the VR space, consider the AR space that you're using, and make sure that the experience that we're uh, using is, of course, safe for its users. Now, the next one, going on to the next slide, is always integrate interactivity. Yes, I'm sorry, you know my question. Okay, so for the mic here, you need to be closer to me para maririnig nyo ako. Okay, kasi distance-based yung audio natin. So in order to be able to, to actually hear what I'm saying, you need to be a little bit closer. Okay? Ayan. Okay, and for me as well. Pero you could also type yung chat dito. Alright, so class, this is what we need to do to design an effective uh, VR experience. Una-una, Establish natin yung academic utility niya. Okay, so it still needs to serve a pedagogical purpose. And then we always design for safety. And then always design with interaction. This is what makes AR and VR uh, more appealing is because ang mga students are actually interacting in virtual space with the teacher. So it's not static material. It's not a static space. They actually kind of move around. And from here, you can see that we exist in this space as uh, tawag mga dito, as avatars. So this is a pretty unique experience, right? And um, I've done this with my classes, and they were actually pretty, pretty engaged, pretty stoked sa, sa ganitong ano, sa ganitong format nung ginawa namin. Okay. So now from here. Uh, let's now go ahead and uh, consider some notes on uh, design. So I'm moving on to the next slide. Again, class, yung nakikita nyo, this is just a PDF. I just uploaded it here. So para nasa classroom pa din. Oh, pwede rin slides dito. All right. So from here, uh, this is basically just a note here that when we design something, it's already a complicate, uh, complicated uh, endeavor. But designing for AR and VR, of course, will definitely create a whole new set of challenges. Uh, safety, interaction, these are things that weren't uh, considered before for design, but right now you have to consider it. It adds complexity to a designer's job. But again, it's so worth it to come up with something new. And then finally, um, whether we like it or not, the technology is already here and it's here to stay. There are a lot and plenty of amazing applications, so maybe now is a good time to get in on the ground floor of designing something that is an emerging technology. Okay, so class, uh, next natin na gagawin, magpifilm viewing tayo today. Okay, so uh, classmates, so it's film viewing time. So I'd like to invite you to this room. So please step into this film viewing room natin. And we have a video here. Okay, for AI, this is from Vincent Technology. We're afraid to ask that. And let's call the rest of the class. So class, uh, please move inside this room. Okay, so Mr. Yapi, 
Uh, so we have uh, Mr. Uh, Clifford uh, uh, Okay. Reviewing the tayo. Okay, so for a film viewing session, we're going to watch a film by Finjan Technologies. Okay, so this is on a loop. It's just going to continue. Hamil, so can they also put YouTube videos? Yes, sir. YouTube videos. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so it's really a classroom. Kaleng, no? setting lang yeah. talaga. Oh. Oh, because usually we get resources also from uh, uh, free sites such as YouTube, so it might be helpful to know, no, that uh, we can also uh, put up YouTube videos in the rooms. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so class, I'm just going to stop this. Uh, again, this is just a demo of what we can do or what we can create with uh, this virtual space. So again, it's actually like a classroom. So it's uh, very similar to a classroom, pero it's just in virtual space, all right? So now next, uh, kindly inviting you guys to go back to our main classroom as we do a quick demo. Uh, yes, go ahead, in question. Maximum capacity for this is 24. Um, what I do, because I have classes where I have uh, 38 to 40 students, is I create two rooms. And then yung dalawang rooms yun nakalink. Hmm. So you can actually transport from one room to the next. So I divide them. One, student, uh, one group film viewing, one group lecture, and then uh, vice versa. Oh. OK, so next. OK, so this one, um, we're now going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to share my screen here. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, go ahead and demo really quickly kung paano to ginawa. Let's see if uh, we can do this here. Uh, bandwidth permitting. OK. So I'm going to share my uh, screen with you guys. So as you can see, at yung screen ko dito. So this is actually my screen. 
Oh, ito yung screen ko. Oh, so ito yung screen ko ngayon. And um, gagawa ako ng new project. So this loading. So So nagde-demo ako ngayon sa inyo kung paano ito siya ginawa like so. All right, and at the same time I'm still here inside of the VR classroom. Okay, so this is where we are. Uh, so by default, ito yung ano, ito yung spoke. Okay. So what I do is meron siyang by default itong parang terrain or crater. You can hide this or just reveal. Uh, all right, and I'm just going to create the. Uh, uh, I'm going to create the ground plane lang nito for now. Ang um, uh, platform natin ngayon medyo nagi echo yung 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 ano ko yung audio natin because may mic tayo ginagamit dito and then we also are using a mic sa stream natin. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, pero um, tawag mga dito. If you're using Google Meet, uh, pwede yun if you just have a tab. So that will solve the problem of the echo, right? Oh. Okay, so anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and just quickly demonstrate something here, really quickly. And then we'll go ahead and do this uh, in person as well, para mas makita natin. So this is free again. This is just an online 3D editor program, 3D editing program. So, uh, mommy, I'm going to explain it in more detail. But this is just a demo that you can actually share your screen. So I'm creating a ground floor here. And then you can hold it and just hit more and then I'm going to hit escape and then I'm gonna hit control V so I'm going to hide lang yung grid para mas makita natin kung ano yung ginagawa ko and then from here So this is a very uh, basic lang na, na room. Okay, so um, again, we're going to continue this on site na live. So just to quickly recap yung experience natin dito. So from here, you can see that you can do, you can share your screen and do a live demo. And at the same time, you can actually see if the students are there. You can ask questions to your students directly to know if they're actually um, tawag mga dito, paying attention. So you can see them. So this solves a lot of problems or this solves a lot of issues for online classes. Okay. But again, we need to be mindful of the use as well. Okay. So. All right. So these are some of the things that we can do. And again, this is just an overview of what we can do here. Um, there are actually additional things pa na pwede natin gawin. You can have, uh, tawag mo nga dito, pwede ka rin gumamit ng pen. You guys can see that you can also write with a pen here. So kung may, I can put a mark or an X here. So again, you're just really limited by, uh, tawag mo nga dito. You're just limited by, um, our creativity when it comes to this one right here. Okay, so again, that concludes our class for today. Um, balik na tayo sa, sa stream. And then, uh,
leave the link open siguro mamaya if you guys want and then i'm um, gonna go ahead and show you guys how to how to create this in uh spoke or how to create a simple room in spoke okay so balik na muna tayo with our with the r na presentation so let's uh discussion tayo dito sa room ha? i'm going to go ahead and exit na and uh, i'm going to see you guys back online on site okay okay so leave na muna ako from the room okay so uh last thing to everyone so ang estudyante natin dito okay balik na ako sa classroom ha close ko na to close na natin to class ha okay close ko na muna to okay Andale. Okay, so there you go. So close ko na sa muna. All right. So, tapos na yung ano natin. Tapos na yung tawag mo nga dito. Inside this. And then, yung camera na yun, itatanggalin din natin. Okay, so hide na muna natin. Okay, so class, uh, tawag mo nga dito. I'm going to leave this still open here. Pero uh, ako, babalik na ako dun sa ano natin. Babalik na ako dun sa, sa, sa meet natin. Okay. And then uh, we could go ahead and uh, uh, do a little bit of Q&A about this later. Okay? So leave muna ako dito. And then the good thing here, class, I have the option to close this if I want to. So if I close this room, it's going to close permanently. Pero if I leave this, so the site is still going to remain active. Okay? Kahit wala na yung teacher dito. All right? So let's go ahead and just leave this room for now. Okay, and then just go back here. All right, so that's the web VR classroom. Okay, so at this point, siguro, uh, before we uh, come up with like yung mga conclusions natin, uh, and then um, share, so any questions with regards to the web VR classroom, any reactions? What do you guys think of uh, that kind of... Uh, Yung reaction, ay, yung, yung ganyan na setup na yan. Okay, so we can have that later on, pero uh, what you're seeing here on the screen right now is basically yung spoke. Okay, so yung spoke is the uh, 3D online editor that um, that is used basically to create yung mga experiences na yun. So this one again is free. It's a 3D online uh, editor system. You don't need to download anything. Okay. So what I'm going to do here right now is I'm going to create a simple room. I'm going to show you guys how quick it is and how easy it is to create it and then launch it right away so that you guys will have uh, something to work with. Okay. So from there, just going to hit get started. So these are some of the files I've already worked with. I'm just going to create new project. And from the new project, the site na to, you can see that they already have templates here that you guys can use as a starting point. If you want to just use a room here, meron actually in classroom dito, pero uh, this file is a little bit too heavy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and create a new empty project. If you click it here or this one. So this is your uh, interface for Spoke. So by default, um, tawag mga dito. Si Spoke will give you this kind of background. This is called uh, uh, yung creator niya. It's a 3D uh, creator. And um, tawag by default, it's there. But personally, I don't use this. You could either hide the visibility for this or you could just delete this. So that we can just start from scratch. So what you're left with is your grid or your ground plane and then this uh, spawn point right here. So yung spawn point is basically the area where you appear inside of that VR experience. So from there, what we want to do is we want to create a ground floor, we want to create a couple of walls, and we want to create a roof for our room, all right? 
Now, the good thing here is that you don't have to uh, start from um, or create your own 3D assets. Pag pumunta tayo dito sa baba nitong viewport natin, this is our viewport. You'll have your assets na ano dito where you have your architectural kit which basically will help you to create your own room. Now, just be aware of the measurement niya because they actually match yung mga other measurements for the wall and for the windows and then so on and so forth. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select yung floor that's 4x4 four four, and I'm just going to click and drag it inside of uh, my scene here. And then once I've uh, created one, I'm just going to hit escape to go ahead and just delete that. And then I'm going to place that right inside or right close to our character right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a room and we're going to put our character dito sa corner. All right. And then you also get free textures for this. Ibig sabihin ito, you can choose the kind of material that's going to show up in your work. And once you have the ground floor, pwede natin i-hide yung visibility ng grid natin so that we can see what we're working with. So ito yung carpet na to. I'm going to change this really quickly to wood planks dark so that you can see that. So that's going to be our floor. So I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate that. And then just match it right so. And then from there, Control D again to duplicate. And then what I'm going to do dito sa hierarchy, where all of these things show up, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control D again to duplicate. Then just move this forward right here. Okay, so, all right, and then create one more. So, control view let. Then, really quickly, dinner siya. Okay, so we now have our floor, so that's how easy it is. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and select all of this. And then I'm going to group them. I'm going to hit control G on my keyboard to group. Floor natin. So we have our floor right here. The next thing to do is to create our wall. Okay, so in wall natin dapat may window. So let's go ahead and create a window and yung wall natin. So I'm going to select this. Again, just kind of click and drag it over here. Dito sa corner. Once that's done. Alright, pag may extra pa, just hit escape. Yes. Delete this one as well. So this is going to be the base that we'll be using. Okay, so I'm just going to hit this. Okay, and then I'm just going to put this in place. Press F to just frame this. Again, this is just a walkthrough just to show you guys how quickly you can create a room inside of this, inside of this experience. Okay, so now from here, I'm going to create a wall for this. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to change the... Uh, wall material into like plaster and then uh, I'm going to click on the wall here try to choose the same wall so what I want to look for is a 4 by 4.5 no it's actually not the wall that we're looking for okay A 4.15 base. So let's click all and see. All right, I think there you go. Okay, so let's just go ahead and click this into uh, in its place and then just hit escape. Okay, and then from there. I'm just going to go ahead and just quickly drag this in position. Okay, so just match it to this one. And then just move this 
forward a little bit so that it matches our our wall and just drag it up a little bit so that it matches our wall okay so there you have a uh, matching wall end then drag it down okay and then just position both okay and then this one we need to change this to plaster as well okay and then I'm just going to hit Control D to duplicate this. Drag it all the way down here. And then uh, I'm just going to group this. Control G. Then uh, take this. This group right here. Then uh, center. Then I'm going to hit Control D to move it forward. Okay, just hit Control Z. Duplicate mo na natin siya. Control D. And with this one selected, just move it forward like so. And then, lagay siya dito sa edge, and then just gonna rotate this. Okay. And then, also maybe create another one here for the sides. So, Control D again. Duplicate. Then, I'm gonna press E. And then just drag it out. Move it to the side as well. Move it forward. Okay. And then from there, uh, control, uh, duplicate again. Control D. And forward. I'm going to hit control. I'm going to hit E. Then just going to position this. Okay. And then the floor, in order to create a ceiling, this is really good. So all you have to do is just duplicate this. So I'm just going to hit Control D and then just drag this up. So now I have a ceiling. So again, really quickly, uh, tapos na, meron na akong basic room. So what you're looking at here on screen is a basic room that was created in Spoke. And uh, it took us all of mga, ano, mga 10 minutes lang, di ba? Didn't really take that much time to be able to create this. Okay. So now once this is done, you have this room right here. The next step lang is to publish this. So just hit publish to hubs. Okay. So this name is, uh, I'm going to name it Akadesh uh, Test. And then let's save the project. And then let's save and publish. And then performance check is to make sure that uh, we're actually uh, low on the poly count. And then low on the file size as well so that it runs perfectly. So again, uh, this is just going to load for like a couple of minutes. So just going to wait. But uh, what I wanted to basically emphasize here is that it's really quick and it's really easy to create this kind of room inside of uh, inside of this free software yung sa spoke na to. and of course we're only limited by our creativity when uh, trying to come up with the room but if you want to start uh, creating your own uh, VR places that's that's basically all it takes create the floor uh, floor plan first and then uh, establish mo yung walls and all of those assets are already pre-made they are inside of the program, so you can just go ahead and just put them together. Uh, some of my this uh, I'm sorry, some of my students in class describe it as parang ano siya, parang Minecraft, where you're adding blocks. Okay. So from there, as you can see, click lang ako view it in hubs, and then create a room with the scene. Okay, so by default, uh, Hubs is going to create like a really weird name. So what you can do is you can go to options. And then dito sa options, you can change the room name. So this is our Akadisha test Hubs. And then this is our Web VR exploration. All right.
right. So the room size is again it's limited to 24, um, but this is open source. So there is actually a, a source code for for this kind of uh, for this application, and uh, there have been uh, there are events that utilize this that can hold up to 100 people. Okay, pero kailangan natin ng IT uh, IT na team to make sure that the uh, that the uh, program can run can run with as many uh, as as oh uh, with as many as 100 participants and also they can uh, program it so that you can add a little bit more assets inside of your scene as well now you also have the option here to allow room members to create and move objects usually ako if i'm having uh, if i do a class i just remove all of this so pati yung create drawings create emoji hello flying so all of this, I kind of just remove this, unless, of course, it's like really necessary for the class that we're doing. And then anyway, after all of those is done, just hit apply. And then you can now go ahead and join our room. The room. So this is technically the same thing that we had Janina. Okay. Pero just on a different scale. Uh, for the purpose of uh, moving everything quickly, I just duplicated the walls with windows. But of course, you can create a wall na wala siyang window so that it you could post your materials over here. So for those of you kanina that weren't able to <clears throat> catch it, it's really quick to post material. So all you have to do is just center, like uh, center your view on a wall. Center your view on a wall. If you want to post like a PDF that has our slides, again, you just hit share. Ah, uh, sorry. Just hit place and upload. There's a, a paperclip link here where you can click that, and it'll open up to your uh, file or uh, file explorer. And then you can go ahead and just browse for the uh, uh, file that you want to upload. Okay, so and yeah, this is the deck that I used. So object is just going to be there and in order to control the size just press the space bar so just drag it okay and then press the space bar again to pin it in place so that it doesn't move and now here you go you have a floating uh, PDF presentation five pages so you just click on it like a regular classroom utilizing your projector but of course, you're doing everything in a virtual space. You can see your students, but they're all avatars. It's a different experience. And for me personally, empirically, when I tried this out to my students, they were really, really engaged, even with the demos and stuff like that. Of course, I intersperse it. I don't use it uh, all of the time. I intersperse it with um, um, traditional online teaching as well using this format. Okay, but it uh, provides a, uh, a really good break from monotony. Okay, and again, uh, you can also share your screen. You can also share your camera here. So this is where you share your camera and your screen. You can also add like uh, um, additional 3D elements from um, other sources like Sketchfab. Um, you'll be able to import them here so that they can see the mga elements that you have here. All right. So this is our last na ano actually yung web VR for the utility. Okay, so just to quickly uh, summarize it. So when we're designing something in AR, we need to establish first its academic utility, how we're going to use it inside of a classroom. So we uh, discussed three ways to do it. The first one was to use a teaching prop. Uh, there are a lot of uh, AR devices out there. I found that assembler EDU is actually very good for that. And then, um, the next one is um, use it as part of a worksheet. And then finally, use it as a virtual space where you can actually engage with your students. All right, so going back to our presentation, this is slideshow natin. So those are the three ways that we can utilize. Of course, there are a lot of ways. Uh, this is still uh, this technology, although it's been around for a while. It's just recently uh, gone through its iterations where we can use it now. And there are a lot, and there are open sources. There are a lot of free resources that we can use as well. 
and of course we're only limited by uh, what we can imagine with this one. But in order to conclude it, uh, let's go back to our topic, designing AR and VR experiences for students. So first consideration is to make sure that our AR and VR experience is grounded in its pedagogical purpose. So to continue this, in kind of concluding lesson natin, when we come up or when we want to use an AR and VR experience, we need to establish its academic utility. So how are we going to use it inside of the classroom? Are we going to use it as a teaching prop? Are we going to use it as part of our worksheet? Are we going to use it to create an AR or AR VR space? So once we know how we're going to use it, then we can design uh, uh, an idea that will use it. Because again, on bottom line, AR VR is still just a tool. It doesn't replace the teacher. So we're just basically adding this into our um, arsenal, if you will, of uh, teaching material in order to make the uh, educational experience of our students a little bit more engaging and a little bit more modern, of course, okay? So if the AR use is grounded in academic utility, uh, meets our pedagogical standards, then it's a good way to design uh, and integrate AR and VR inside the classroom. Now, the next is a practical consideration we always need to design for safety. So when you're designing AR uh, experiences, again, as based on our definition, AR is integrating um, visual elements into our physical world. So if you use your camera, you'll actually be able to see things that aren't really there. It's generated by our AR device. So with that said, uh, there are safety concerns there. So when you're designing something, um, I have an idea kung gaano kalaki yung environment na gagamitan ng experience and always keep it to a manageable level where the user is never in danger when using that. Like I said, uh, there have been instances with the use of AR for uh, some games that uh, raised some safety concerns. So always design for safety. Always make sure of the environment. And on another note, when you're designing for VR, uh, please be aware that the user is immersed. So, naka headset siya. So, the user is not uh, aware of the environment all of the time, 100%. So, when you're designing VR experiences, always design for safety as well. Uh, take note of the uh, space that the uh, VR user is going to, to use. Okay? Now, finally, last point natin for design is always integrate interaction. So, this is one of the main... Um, draws for AR and VR is that it's interactive. So it's not static in terms of uh, it's not static in terms of material and it's also not uh, consumed passively. So when we have books and we take a look at pictures, it's usually passive consumption where we actually just take in the images and then that's it. For VR, it actually reveals itself in layers, especially if you add additional mga animations to it. So your execution na lang yun is uh, a little bit more technical. We need to make counting learning curve when we're trying to learn the software for creating mga AR experiences. Uh, the good thing is that there are a lot of free resources out there. So Adobe Aero right now is free from Adobe. That rarely happens. So it's a good it's a good way to get uh, to get into that uh, tech. Unfortunately, my limitation siya it's um you can only use it through ios you assembly edu kanina na example natin there's also a free account uh my counting limitation lang when it comes to the file size that you can consume but again it's a great way to get started with the technology and try to figure out if this is something that uh will eventually be worth our while and finally yung pag design natin ng web vr space uh thanks to mozilla hubs and mozilla labs uh, they created this uh, free and open source na, um, basically in a program where you can create uh, 3D environments using their online editor Spoke, which is also free, to create web VR na mga resources. And the great thing about that web VR resource na ginamit natin, you can actually uh, use it inside of a headset and you can get the full experience. But at the same time, you can also use it with just a web browser. Okay, so hindi lang siya yung full experience talaga, but you still get the uh, web VR experience, right? And then finally, uh, just my final notes, ito kanina yung sa slides na ginamit ko. So designing for AR and VR uh, presents a whole new set of challenges, and that's complexity to something that is already complex technically. 
right? So I'm not going to sugarcoat and say that it's really easy, but it's doable, okay? So pag nagdi-design kasi tayo, there are sets of uh, creative problems, there are considerations. Usually, pag traditionally na nagdi-design tayo, all we have to worry about is the screen or where the uh, output is going to be presented in itself. Normally, 2D lang yan, eh, flat line screen yan. And there are principles of design that deal with that. For AR and VR, there's the added complexity of user interaction. There's the added complexity of uh, considering space. So, hindi na siya limited to two-dimensional space. You're actually uh, allowed to use yung physical environment natin. So, all of those are new challenges. So, they come up with, um, uh, we need to come up with additional solutions. And these three that we mentioned over here are uh, some simple solutions that you could uh, utilize when you're trying to design AR and VR. Plus, of course, the workflow natin that we shared kanina. So, this is in conclusion. Uh, like it or not, uh, this technology is um, here to stay. So, what we're saying is that technology is it's like Pandora's box. So, once it's out, it's out there. Okay. So, there are already a lot and uh, there's plenty of amazing applications out there. So, maybe now at its infancy, at its infancy it's a great time to get in on the ground floor of designing for an emerging technology. And like I said kanina, uh, the majority of the content for AR and VR is still for entertainment, it's for games and for entertainment. Um, we as educators, we need to get in on this because this is something that a lot of, uh, of um, students are actually uh, using. It's their basically means of communicating. You can actually get on the ground floor and communicating with them if you're using the same medium that they're using. And like I said kanina, the statistics on the number of uh, game users, which is technically the format that we're using for AI and VR, is already at uh, one third of the entire global population and growing. So I believe that this is something that's going to be integral as a way to communicate and to educate, uh, to educate uh, not only present students, but upcoming students as well. So that's it for... Uh, my talk on AR and VR. I hope you guys uh, got something from this today, from this experience. Hope you learned something from this. And hopefully there's something here that you can go ahead and uh, try to experience. Again, just experiences. When I tried this out, wala din guides eh. So I had to, uh, kinapa ako to yung technology na to. And si Sir Jake actually saw the very first iteration of what I did. It's a far cry from, from what it is right now. Yung una -una kong ginawa was very, very clunky. So, kasi the technology then, a couple of years ago, wasn't there yet. Pero, again, uh, it was interesting. It got, my, it got my interest. So, I just kept doing it. And I just kept discovering on um, how to add uh, additional assets and how to fully utilize it for an academic setting. So, that's basically it. Uh, next slide is... Thank you, everybody. Okay, so... All right, so that's it for AR and VR. Yan, maraming maraming salamat, no, Sir, uh, Sir Hamil, for bringing us, no, uh, into our consciousness, no, yung oh. paggamit ng AR and VR tech, no, into uh, education. Sir mm -hmm. Jake, um, any insights or comments? Okay. Yeah, Apos no, actually, oh, si Hamil pa yung nag-thank you. Tayo dapat ang mag-thank you. Grabe, yes. it's magnetic. Diba? <laughs> new knowledge, new strategies, new possibilities for teachers yung nakuha natin today. And Hamil, wow, that was awesome. Maraming salamat, Hamil. Thank you, sir. Oh, Nalala mo yun, sir, yung first na ginawa ko dati. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Hindi pa tumatakbo. So, <laughs> Tsaka limited na, lang yung eh. first na, diba? Yeah, oh, so the technology has grown. So it's, it's really right. fun to, yeah, so... Yes, no. I think it's it all starts with that, no, yung courage, no, uh, on trying an innovation, okay? Mm -hmm. Um kasi wala naman talaga uno na walang madali, uh, at saka uno, yes. a second no, is that kung hindi tayo mag-start, sino mag-start? Okay? So uh -huh. sometimes things you have to start, no, even if there are like um hesitations, okay, doubts or even na uh, ano no, um uh, challenges na along the way. Okay? Lahat naman ng mga great innovations, no, always start with that, no. Okay? Um, so, Sir Jake, I think we can start with some questions. I have um, yes. picked up some questions from the audience. Although kanina kasi ang daming mga comments is more on, wow, amazing, ang galing, uh, uh, lodi, lods na yung mga comments na yan. Okay? Pero meron ako na pick up na tatlong questions, Sir Hamil, if you don't mind, okay. uh, uh, sure. as, as in this. No? Okay? 
Uh, the first one is, well, definitely this is a very good question. Okay, this is, um, what is the minimal hardware and software requirements to adopt an AR, VR tech in the classroom? Okay, so, um, tawag mo nga dito. Uh, I would guess siguro i5, uh, 8 gigabytes na RAM, um, standard lang na ano, standard lang. Kasi web browser lang to eh. Uh, when mm -hmm. we say web browser, if you can browse the web smoothly, it will run the program smoothly. Yung pinaka limitations lang with the free version of the web VR is yung 24 people at a time inside of a room. Kasi yun yung default niya. Pero, uh, again, if you can browse the web uh, smoothly with your uh, PC or laptop, whatever you're using, you should be able to use uh, Mozilla Hubs smoothly. Okay? So, ang limitations lang when we're designing a room, isasabi naman sa'yo ng, ano, eh, ng, ng editor, um, it's going to give you a warning if you're over the file limit, but usually it's around 16 MB. Uh, pero I've created rooms na up to 29 MB, it's still running really well. So in conclusion, uh, a standard a standard PC is going to run this. If you can uh, surf the web smoothly, it's going to run this. For AR, like I said kanina, unfortunately for Adobe and AR, which is what we use in school, it's only limited to iOS lang na device for now. But we really can't complain because it's free. Libre kasi yung Adobe Aero eh. So, and again, it's really simple to use. Uh, the reason why I like it, because it works with all Adobe uh, applications. So, it can run um, additional na Adobe na mga applications, which we use for um, graphic design. So, that's the reason why we use Aero. Um, yun yung limitations niya. As far as the actual hardware specifications are concerned, um, again, may limitations as a file size, pero because this is web-based, you're planning to launch it. Uh, again, if you can uh, browse smoothly, then um, you should run it. Minimal siya. Of course, mm, around 8 gig na RAM and around i5 na core processor and uh, recent na, na video card. So nothing too fancy. You don't need really mga high-end video cards. And then the same thing with assembler EDU. So again, uh, just an average na, na computer setup with 8 gig of RAM. Um, tawag mo nga dito. 4 gigs of RAM would probably run it, pero if you are using uh, computers, I would suggest to go na 8, gigabit, uh, 8 gigs of RAM na or something para at least mas ma-maximize mo. And then something recent lang when it comes to your uh, processor, but i5 and above is okay. And uh, decent lang kahit na mid-level lang na graphics card is going to run everything. Okay, so yun yung uh, hardware for that. Thank you so Sorry, much, sir, um, Hamil. No? Okay. Uh, second question is on um, in the ano, no, web uh, BR. Okay? We're in, okay. ano, can we place multiple materials in the BR room? Yes, you can actually design your own. Mm -hmm. um, sa school namin, during the pandemic, um, Ang department namin animation eh, and visual arts. So uh, every year we used to have an exhibit face to face. Pero the pandemic ended that, of course. So what I did was I actually modeled yung gallery namin. Ginawa ko, gumawa ako ng 3D model. I uh, utilized uh, 3D software program Maya, and then I exported it out, and then uh, changed the file to GTLB, and then uploaded it sa sa loob ng spoke, and then gumana siya. So yes, you can definitely customize it. Um, like I said, it's just a matter of just trying the software, kung ano pong pwede niya magawa. But you can create your own 3D models and then integrate that. You can actually create your own na mga environment from an external na 3D program and then bring it inside. Pero yung file format mo has to be GTLF. Uh, I'm sorry, GTLB. Kasi yun lang yung binabasa ng spoke. Ayan. Okay, so dumadami na, no? Kaya talagang, uh, grabe nga na. I, I know teachers, sometimes na, kanina may mga comments kasi na-overwhelm daw mm -hmm. sila. Na, ano, na, pero, uh, again, no, meron tayong seeds of consciousness of possibilities. Right. No? I think that's that's the, what's best talaga ng uh, so, Sir Hamil and Sir Jake, no? Okay. Uh, so course, siguro if we can interject lang. Um, go ahead, sir. Siyempre, if we, if we take a look at it from the finished point of view, kung hindi natin i-consider yung journey, yung process, Siyempre, yes. overwhelming siya. 
Pero the reason why I mentioned the first iteration na ginawa ko was really, really clunky was because I just utilized kung ano lang nandun. So mm-hmm. I, st- I had to start from there. I had to start with whatever materials were there. And it didn't start out na ganun na yung, yung nagawa, yung in example ko kanina. I had to figure that out step by step din. Pero it, it was just basically just playing around with the software. So ang suggestion ko, uh, start with the... Um, the default assets with the default assets and dami mo nang pwedeng gawin eh mm-hmm. so and then from there you could just build on the complexity oh pero if you start uh with the uh, basic tapos sa foundational niya ng mga elements there then you can see ay pwede pa pala to ay pwede pa pala to so you just go on a road of discovery yes na tama yun wag natin madaliin teachers okay uh, lahat nag-start naman sa first step okay uh, ang mahalaga we take that first step Okay. Ito naman, Sir Amil, ito always concept ng mga teachers oh. natin whenever we're using technology like this. No? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, do this, um, the, uh, the platforms that you have presented, no? do they have mobile access? Yes. Actually, yung first two, mm-hmm. mobile, pwede siya. And then yung web VR natin, um, magra-run din siya sa mobile, sa, sa phones. So if I send you the link on your phone, you can actually navigate mm-hmm. it as well. Ang experience ko lang sometimes may konting mga performance issues sa sa phone pero it will run. It will run sa phone and like you said this technology is being developed and there are a lot of contributions that are happening with the program eventually it's going to be very seamless with mobile phones. All the AR na mga examples natin kanina are really optimized for mobile devices. So yun yung sa, sa AR. Yung web VR natin again yung kanina yung experience natin sa spoke is also you can also run it in uh, in phones. Pero sometimes may mga performance issues tayo. It's really optimized for browsers uh, sa desktop. But you can run it on your phone. Yes. Okay. So teachers, I hope that now, ano, no, uh, once again, open up more possibilities. Okay. So Jake, any um, insights, questions that you might want? Uh, yeah, siguro lang, Hamil. I just like to ask, uh, from your experience using AR, VR in the classroom, uh, kamusta yung mga bata, Hamil? Uh, how, 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 what, what's the response like? And Kadina, in explain mo naman that engagement is mm-hmm. high. Pero from your experience, maybe we can um, uh, specify it further. No, kung ano yung oh. experience then the actual experience of the kids nung nag AR VR oh. uh, experience sila. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, let's start with the AR first. Yung sa sa classroom, then we we'll go to VR. Uh, in AR, when I introduced it to class, um, naka-hiflex kami ngayon, sir, so we have some on-site students and some online students. So sometimes when we're doing demos, medyo pinipilit mo pa eh, or nakita mo may konting resistance. But for this one, wala eh. They were actively designing, they were actively exploring the software. And then nakikita mo sila kaagad, nakaganun kaagad sa phone nila, trying to look at their like to look at their AR experiences. And mm-hmm. also, they were looking at their AR experiences as well. And on a side note, uh, I don't know, sir, if you remember, um, uh, si Miss Mel Ata, mm-hmm. she created a scavenger hunt na yes. AR, VR. So, ayun din, nagagulo din yung mga students natin that are not normally athletic. You see them running, going to yeah. the next AR and QR code. Uh, sa class ko rin, ganun din. You would see students that normally don't move. You see them moving around trying to look for the perfect spot for their AR and VR experience. So the, the engagement is really, it's not a hard sell as a right. topic. Di nila alam, they're actually learning something na. So, mas madali. For VR naman, sir, mas grabe. I introduced it nung pandemic, during the first year of the pandemic. And uh, when we were shifting online, so when we were shifting online, there was, a, of course, an adjustment for some of the students who weren't used to it. So nung nagbukas ako ng VR classroom, um, tumas yung attendance rate, uh-huh. participation. So the students were actually there. So mm-hmm. kahit na kinuklose ko na yung room, they were begging to stay. They wanted mm-hmm. to collaborate with their classmates. So if I set up like a group project then and there, they would have done it they would have finished it right away. So they actually stayed until after the classes because it was a way that they could communicate in real time with their students. And again, 
I was able to get more responses from uh, students uh, sa VR classroom kasi I was able to see them although in avatar form. Mm. So it was also engaging for them. They saw me in avatar form as well. So parang mas nagkakaroon ng engagement instead of yung uh, traditional online classes where sometimes video on, sometimes video off right. na nagde-demo. So uh, yun yung basically. And right now, sa class ko for web VR, again, it's the same thing. I asked them to create something. So it's not a hard sell. They actually stay mm-hmm. in their computers and just continue to to engage. Mm-hmm. So yun yung so, personal experience. The engagement is really high. Right. Just, and and um, I guess the love for learning, no? We can yeah. also be clearly seen, no? Yeah. 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 So, Jake, yeah. sabi niya ni last time, no? Ni Direct Meili na yes. motivated to learn. Right. Hindi mo kailangan right. pilitin, no? Hindi mo kailangan i-require. Uh, Pasok kayo, may attendance tayo, mm-hmm. you know, graded worksheet no, or graded quiz na pupunta yung estudyante pupunta. regardless of what they're going to do, no? Kasi yeah. they love to learn. I think that's so really a, and one of the best things na that AR and VR tech can actually bring. No? Okay. So, uh, any other questions? Kung kanina wala akong questions na Sir Jay na nakikita sa... Okay na. Sa, Oo, ano? Grabe, umaapaw sa pasasalamat kay yes, Sir Hamid. Thank you din, thank you din, thank you din. By the way, ako, Sir Jake, may isa akong tanong. Uh, okay. And this is a similar question that I also asked um, uh, Miss Mel yesterday. No? Kasi, mm. natin, no, kapag, basta, basta laging nag, nag-start tayo with with new technology, with uh, innovative ideas, no? It's always the first step, no? And bringing everyone on that same page, okay? Uh, mm-hmm. Will be very hard, no? And it will be very difficult, no? Actually, in your first hump ng, uh, ng innovations, no? Whenever you have any, uh, any, um, um, innovations, okay? So, um, ang question ko siguro, Sir Hermine, is that um, since you started it, no? And, uh, well, of course, with the guidance of uh, Sir Jake, what are the key steps, okay, uh, that we have to take, no? In order to uh, bring in AR and VR tech uh, into our classrooms and um, maybe also sustain no, it to, uh, to the extent that it becomes a successful adaptation of the program. Okay, so siguro sir kasi um, technology, uh, kanina maganda yung question, mobile. So mobile platform, uh, kasi dito sa Philippine setting, mas marami siguro yung may access to a mobile platform instead of an actual desktop or PC. Pero, uh, in order for it to be accessible, aside from the platform, is the uh, faculty side. Can I embrace the faculty and technology that the technology is there? Kasi, yun nga eh, once the technology is there, hindi mo na pwede mabalik sa, hindi mo na pwede kahon ulit eh. The technology is already out there. And the other thing that the, we as faculty siguro, in order to put it into a proper perspective, like I said kanina, the statistics on the number of video game users around the world is staggering. It's one-third of the entire population. So that's a lot, and it's growing. So it's going to reach a point where that uh, everybody, or if not everybody, the majority is one way or the other familiar with navigating inside of a game environment, which is basically ganun yung classroom. Eh. It was a game environment. So people that played games before, pati yung keys na ginagamit to navigate inside it, WASD, those are keys that are used to navigate the games. So I guess just to summarize, a platform, if we can create something for mobile as well as desktop, na ganun siya versatile, that would really help. Uh, in order for it to be successful, it has to be embraced by faculty. So it has to start from there, siguro. We don't need some additional na mga formulas. If faculty starts to integrate that, students will start to expect it. So, ganun siguro. Oh. And of Thank course, uh, importante din ganitong platform, sir, nag-share ng knowledge, yes. share ng mga best practices. So other teachers can see what can be done with the tech. And ako din, I always check sa mga forums na ganito to see what other people are doing as well with the technology. Yeah, and seeing no um, yeah. there's for learning Sir Jake siguro na yun yung yeah. uh, nakita ko at nakuha na hugot ko no from from Sir Hamil no uh, yeah. hindi uh, never uh, ano no never um, um, uh, full cup na no? laging ano mm. always like in order to fill in with you. Maraming salamat Sir yeah. for that uh, oh. uh, 
game. Sa yeah, tapos nalaman natin, no, Sir Franco, na may Lodi pala tayong Sir Hamil na napakagaling. Yes. Diba? Oh, <laughs> who's who's Lodi 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 <laughs> Oh, who's revolutionizing diba? balance, diba? eh, Jake, no? Exactly. Tsaka strong yung pedagogy. Yung pagtuturo pa rin at the end of the day. Uh-huh. Hindi lang yung pag-drawing or pag-design. But Hamil in his talk, you know, was very focused on on teaching, di ba? On classroom yeah. management, on hmm. paano natin ma-maximize yung tools to achieve that end result. And, and that's what we really appreciate about it, di ba? Iba yun, Sir Jake, no? Magkaiba ding level. Iba yun, eh. People would... Uh-huh. Maybe may mga iba alam mang gumamit ng AR and VR pero to te- to to use it for for learning and to even teach it no yung AR and VR an entirely different dimension which of course not excellently was uh, displayed and no, exhibited by Sir Hamil mm-hmm. for today okay and um Sir Jake so far wala na akong questions na nakikita sa okay, sa chat natin you know, Puro thank you so uh-huh. much thank you Sir Hamil um thank you so much thank you Jake thank you everybody Oh. Ayan. Siguro at this point, um, Sir Jake no, uh, would like to, of course, no, recognize yung um, uh, contribution ni, um, ni Sir uh, Hamil no, for, for the community. So, we'd like to um, sh- ano, no, um, as, as, ano, no, um, provide this certificate of appreciation to Sir Hamil. So, we'd like to invite um, Sir Jake to please read yes. the citation. Sure. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of all the teachers of Akad Asia and Kaagapay Teacher Support, Napakaraming teachers niyan, uh, Hamil, not just in the Philippines but around the world. Uh, we would like to present to you this certificate of appreciation for sharing with us generously and um, uh, uh, unconditionally you know, the knowledge in this recently concluded webinar entitled Using ARVR Tech in Designing Quality Student Experiences, awarded to you this 29th of September, 2022, uh, by uh, Franco Nicolo P. Adun, our Administrator for Kaagapay Teacher Support, mm-hmm. and Mr. Nilesh Batia, our CEO and co-founder and founder of Akad Asia. Once again, thank you very much, Sir Hamid. Again, thank you, everyone. And ka, mute ka, Sir Franco. <laughs> um, thank you, Sir, Sir Jake, for that. And of course, Sir Hamil, no, uh, on tradition, kis ating community, sa aming community, no, every time we end our session, we always end with positive, uh, encouraging words. Maybe we just ask, no, very short uh, words of encouragement, no, uh, for our teachers. So for me, yes. <laughs> um, I guess ganon din. Uh, ako ay don't really think of myself as uh, uh, yung teacher or teacher per se, but as a lifelong learner nga, yun nga. Um, I design my lessons the way that I envision them to learn. Mm. So at the same time, instead of just imparting knowledge, I want to absorb knowledge as well. Mm. So siguro, that is what draws me to new technology because um, you're teaching and at the same time you're learning. I think there's a a studying method that does that for understanding new concepts, uh, you need to be able to explain it in a way that is very clear. So for when encountering new technology like this, I don't really think of it as something complex, but it's something new. So it's like a new discovery or a new toy. And then in order to discover it, just small steps, and then magbubukas naman yun eh. So with the web, uh, knowledge is knowledge is there. So nandun yung knowledge na yun. So yun siguro, uh, if I could compress all of that, uh, be a lifelong learner. So be a student as well as a teacher. Maraming salamat yeah. for that, no, Sir Hamil. Okay, so, uh, Sir Hamil, kapaalam na po kami. Maraming maraming salamat po once again, no, uh, both from, um, from Kaagapay Teacher Support and Akadesha for your time and for your expertise that you have shared no, with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, for with, that, with all of us no, today. Thank you, everybody. Thanks again. Ayan, Sir Jake, no? Uh, <laughs> Session number three, <laughs> pero talaga, apaw na. <laughs> Grabe, no? From, from, from uh, as an approach from uh, into computational thinking, now yeah. AR and VR tech, no? In designing um, um, a quality student experience, no? Sir Jake, Puno na ang salok, no? Pero nasa yes, session 3 yes. pa lang tayo. 
Oh, 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 oh. And let's be reminded, you know, to still be grounded, di ba? I mean, yes. maraming tayong natututunan, no? But uh, again, uh, how we're bringing it to our students, to our classrooms, and daming possibilities, okay. right? Yes. Oh, oh, practical uh, and and real and and uh, you know, um, certain considerations still have to be taken into con- into consideration, di ba? Uh, so. And it is also inspired then that we're le- learning all of these things and you know uh, figuring out how to apply them in our respective contexts. Yes. So, siguro din Sir Jake no paalala lang sa mga teachers natin that this is yes. going to be stored forever. So kunwari yes. hindi pa natin apply ngayon, pwedeng balik-balikan paulit-ulit no. Uh, and actually din naman talaga ang ultimate goal din ng kaagapay teacher support and of course no ng Academia yes. no to build Uh, resources that teachers can tap in no, every time they would need to yeah. upgrade, upskill, um, or ano, no, uh, explore other approaches in education. Yeah. Okay, so, mm-hmm. yeah. so maraming maraming salamat ulit, no, uh, Sarah Mill, for, for bringing us no, this new technology. Definitely worth uh, exploring. Okay? So, and, uh, I think by this time, Sir Jake uh, will now give no, some reminders for our teachers okay, um, uh, regarding our uh, CPD event. Okay? Uh, by the way, uh, we're, we're at already 4,000. So, meron pang uh, 1,000. Pero, <laughs> pero, again, nga, ano sabi nga namin, na-advance na rin naman ng Akadesha mm-hmm. yung uh, invitation and enrollment to the courses. So, um, you should be able to access uh, already no, ng mga asynchronous materials natin for the CPD participants. But anyhow, okay, um, and a reminder for, uh, for the for all uh, official CPD participants. Okay? Sign up to Akadesha using your, reg- your registered email address. That means that's the one that you use to register for mm-hmm. the CPD event. Your email address has been uh, invited into the course no, for this series. Take note of the attendance codes given at, uh, at the end of each uh, session. Use the attendance code to complete attendance codes uh, to complete the attendance form to be posted at the last day of the series That would mean October 1, Saturday. The evaluation form at the end of the session is optional for the CPD participants. Feel free to uh, accomplish if you want, uh, if you want to receive a certificate of participation. For non-CPD participants, complete the evaluation form at the end of the session to qualify for the certificate of participation. You may also sign up for Akadesh account. No? Not again, sabi ko, hindi na May. Sign up. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, the course will be made available for all the series. No, kasi... Huwag nating sayangin no, yung, yung platform ng Akadesha, no kasi napaka-massive ng collection ng courses. No? And again, not to mention, yung sabi nga ni Sir J. Capon, 30,000 uh, links no, to different creators okay, around the world. Right. That's a massive PLC, no? Sir, Sir J. Uh-huh. No? Hindi, uh, yeah. hindi na yan yung usual small PLCs natin. This is one massive uh, PLC. Okay? Yes. So that would be all the, uh, the reminders uh, for our um, CPD and non-CPD participants. Okay, at this point, um, again, no, this is the link no, to sign up. Kung may mga hindi pa po nakaka-sign up, mga newcomers po, okay, or mga katanggap lang ng mga letter of acceptance, eto na, mga steps, no? Um, step-by-step way to sign up um, to Akadesha. Okay? And uh, teachers, eto na ang ating uh, evaluation link for today. Uh, please evaluate this session at https colon slash lastinyurl.com slash DE03 evaluation. Okay, the attendance code for the day uh, is uh, O-K-O-H-I-L. Okay, so that's all letters, no? So wala naman tayong nilagay na um, um, numbers okay, sa ating code. Okay, so please do take note of that, okay? You will need that to accomplish the attendance for, form uh, on day five. Okay, Sir Jake, any final reminders? Any other? Yeah, things? sir, bukas, Franco, babiyahe tayo. Yes. Oo, ibang mundo yung ma, ma, mapag-aaralan natin bukas. We have a special guest all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa to talk to us about their experiences in using technology to empower classrooms all over Africa. So, ibang perspective naman yung makikita natin, yes. uh, Franco. And definitely, uh, through the experiences that will be shared, uh, marami rin tayong mapupulot doon na pwede rin nating magamit in our respective schools. So, we're very excited so about that. Totoo. I agree sir. Ito talaga I think madami tayong makukuha no as a uh, uh, as a model no. Okay kasi context wise right. may may proximity yung context no. Okay? Um mm-hmm. the remoteness, the lack of resource maybe, 
uh, and the setup. Uh-huh. No? Okay. So we can definitely pick up. And of course, siguro, yung inspiration. No? Okay. Actually, yeah. sir, Jake, I, I, I'm, I'm really itching to listen no? to the experience of uh, uh-huh. ice club. Kasi gusto kong malaman no? paano, yeah. saan nagsimula, how it, how it was sustained. No? Um, inspiring, definitely. Yes. There's something right. noteworthy. You know? And um, okay. ano, um, definitely something that oh, I'm no. looking forward yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, tsaka mas challenging ang circumstances nila doon, Franco. Yes. Mas mahirap mm-hmm. yung condition ng mga bata, ng mga teachers doon. So we will find out, you know, what continues to drive them, uh, what, conti- what, you know, forms of support are being extended to them, and ultimately learn from, from their own experiences. So excited tayo about that. Yes. No, thank you so much, Sir Jake. No, so teachers, magkakalimutan tomorrow, same time at 5 o'clock p.m. No, for our mm-hmm. fourth Actually, PIP session, pero dahil nga na, na-postpone natin PIP's uh, first session, pang-apat na episode na po natin tomorrow no? uh, here at, uh, at uh, Kaagapa Digital Report um, in collaboration and partnership with Akadesha no? on our digital mm-hmm. education, transforming learning and teaching series. Okay, So once again, teachers, maraming maraming salamat. I was informed, gumagana ang evaluation link natin. So uh, mm-hmm. take time to accomplish the teachers. That's going to be until Saturday yung um, ano, evaluation link. So paalam po, teachers, and have a great evening. Ingat po tayo lahat. Stay negative from COVID-19, but stay positive in life, teachers. Paalam po. Paalam.